Hello everybody in YouTube land and welcome. Grab some popcorn, grab some snacks, maybe put this video, uh, this video in your watch list to watch later because uh, it's going to be a long one. I'm going to be ranking all of the treacheries in the core products. So this includes Corset, Dunwich, Carcosa, Forgotten Age, Circle Undone, Dream Eaters, uh, and Innsmouth. I think I got them all. Uh, so we're just talking about those. There's going to be no return tos, no side scenarios. This is just like the, the base game stuff. And I haven't played enough Edge of the Earth to really know how I feel about those treachery cards yet. So this is going to be fun. Uh, we're not rating them in terms of like a power level. We're, I mean, it is kind of power level, but mostly the idea is how scary, or in this case, how bad the card is when we draw it. An enemy stays on the board, so they're like, they have the idea of scary, but this is like when you see the card, when I draw the card, I'm going to be like, oh my god, this is really bad, this is bad, this is annoying, but manageable, it's not too bad, completely manageable, and then the didn't even draw a mythos card. So I look at this and I'm like, dang, didn't even draw a mythos card. So the mythos cards, uh, there's a big variety for how, how bad they can be. For each investigator because like for example mystics can handle um mystics can handle uh treacheries a lot better than like a rogue can on average right so um it's kind of like the idea of generally how bad are they like if uh, across all my investigators how bad they are or like in the terms of a mystic how likely am I going to want to spend my ward of protection on this is the kind of the idea either for myself or for another investigator at the table. So because there's so many like t times where a treachery can really change on how bad it is, um, it really comes down to uh, the general feeling when you draw your encounter card for the turn and you go, oh, this is X. So uh, let's dive in and let's get this going. All right. We're starting with Hunting Shadow. This is a peril. So peril, if you uh, there's going to be spoilers abound for this. So uh, if you want, if you don't want to get spoiled, I highly suggest you get out of this video. I'm just going to say it. But drop a like before you do. So peril means that if only you can deal with it. So you must either spend one clue or take two damage. This card um, is uh, honestly right off the bat. I'm like this card is bad. This is bad. When you see this, the first one, you're like, okay, this is... The first one is like, oh, this is not too bad. Spending a clue is the easy part of the card, obviously, right? But clues are also progress. So having to spend a clue or take two damage is not like where you want to be a lot of the time. And when you're a fighter or the goon, most of the time this just says take two damage. Teslas take two damage get punched in the face this isn't in the old oh god this is really bad territory because like the first one is manageable and if it's divvied out over multiple people it's not too bad but when i see this card i'm like oh this is bad this is not great i either lose a resource that i can't get back at all like if it put it on my location that would be this is annoying but manageable but because i lose the clue even on the softer side of the card that still is pretty rough false lead if you have no clues, false lead gains surge. If you have one or more clues, test book four. For each point you fail by, place one of your clues on your location. I'll be honest. Uh, I th This card is a surge 90% of the time. So to me, this one is completely manageable. Like, worst case scenario, this is like a... If you're a seeker, you're going to pass the book test. And otherwise, you just don't draw it. Because it just surges into something else. So... Like, I think, like, it's, I don't think it's on the didn't even draw a mythos card tier. I think it's just, like, completely manageable. I don't even know if we're going to even, if we're going to get to this tier. But I have it here just for, uh, you know, posterity's sakes. Udmordoth's Wrath. Test Brain 5. For each point you fail by, you must either choose one. Choose to discard a card from your hand or take one damage and one horror. Wow. Yo, that's not great. This is bad. <laughs> this is bad. Um, if you if you're a Kluver Mystic or a Survivor or something that's really bad, basically lose. Going back to this one, chat. We're not going to argue about all of these. Get if you're if you're dropping clues to this card as the Kluver, get better at the game. That's all I'm going to say. This card is completely manageable. It's totally fine. It's it's not a problem at all. Like I'm not even I don't even want to say it. like if you're losing all your clues to this. 
you're doing it's it's you're you can fix this you're okay you'll be fine this is what your luckies are for as a survivor this is what your warden protections are for as a if you're even worried about it but you're not don't be don't if you're worried about false lead you we have we have to talk later <clears throat> um Udmur, that's wrath test brain this one yeah this one's still the bad one this one's still just like rough it's like it's losing cards from your hand can be pretty soft but still even like discard five is pretty rough <laughs> uh lose and if not you don't have five cards in your hand you have two and you fail you draw you draw like a minus two and you're a will a, a rogue this can just kill you because it's damage and horror this is uh that's a tough card that's uh this, this card's bad grasping hands test foot three for each point you fail by take one damage Ah, you know what? We're going to be talking about these two guys together. The Rotting Remains and the um, Grasping Hands. Uh, these are great, wonderfully designed cards. And both of them uh, fit into the This Is Bad tier, I think. I think they're just like, they're really good designs. And sometimes you're happy to see them, right? Like sometimes you're like, you're the Mystic and you get the Rotting Remains. But then sometimes you're the Mystic and you get Grasping Hands. Sometimes you're the rogue, you get grasping hands, and you're like Poggy. Sometimes you're the rotting remains, you get it's through the rogue, and you get rotting remains, and you're like, oh my god, this is this is bad news bears for me. Uh, I think just overall, like as I said at the start of this video, um, where these treacheries live, they live on a sliding scale depending on the investigator. Um, but I think that uh, they're both just rough draws on average more than they are good draws, uh, especially Rotting Remains. And as Tasty Toast says, um, it being in uh, a non, the Grasping Hands being in a non easily thematic set is really unfortunate because this would be a lot scarier. Like Rotting Remains can show up in a lot of places and it's really good and it's really ubiquitous, right? R Grasping Hands, not so much. And if we, um, if we have to, if, if this showed up more, Seekers and Mystics now have something to care about, right? But because it's not thematically appropriate, they really should just design another one of the, I mean, like, they can't because it's not in the core set. That's the thing that makes Ronnie Remain so freaking good, is that it's in the core set and, like, it's just thematically it fits everywhere. Just a really good card. Really good design, too. And they're both spooky. Frozen in fear. Okay, so uh, if you're a, uh, a rogue, this is, oh god, this is really bad, right? Because then you're like, how do I get out of this? Um, of course, you can always build around it. Um, for most other classes, like a mystic or a survivor or a seeker or a guardian, so the other four classes, this basically just eats an action for the round. Sometimes you fail the uh, brain test and... Uh, it's you like you have to do it again right but then sometimes you're like it's a-okay uh so i'm gonna respect the rogue and go the oh god this is really bad right like we're gonna respect the rogue side of this frozen in fear for a second and just say for a rogue this is oh god this is really bad um the uh the uh, this is annoying and manageable fits for like most of the other classes like like guardian and seeker it's a it's a it's a shot to see if you get out but like mystics and survivors like this is annoying but manageable so i think overall it's going to just balance out into the this is bad tier if you get two of them uh it's it's a nightmare it's a nightmare uh like the like the first one is always like this is bad the second one is oh god this is really bad but i think that this one like has such a once again such a sliding scale but i think it just lives on the this is bad tier wow look at all the this is bads already in the core set that's cool. Dissonant Voices. Uh, you cannot play assets or events at the end of the round. Discard Dissonant Voices. Uh, this one's annoying but manageable. There are times when this can just absolutely wreck you. Like, we have to respect that, right, chat? We have to respect that there are going to be times when this card just destroys you, right? Like, it, you needed to play an event or an asset to win the game, and then you draw Dissonant Voices, and now you can't. Like, that's... Um, bad like that is like that is really bad um but i think overall this card is more annoying than it is game breaking you're gonna remember 
due to the nature of humans, you're going to remember the times where it's bad over the times where it just is just like annoying for a turn. But overall, I think this card is annoying, but absolutely manageable. Uh, these two tiers, the annoying but manageable and not too bad, are very similar to one another. But like the, this is annoying. Annoying is worse than just like meh. So like that's why it's on a higher tier. Ancient Evils. All right. Are you ready for everyone in YouTube land and uh, maybe some people in Twitch land to disagree with me on this? This is annoying but absolutely manageable. The Ancient Evils. Uh, so much so that like if, if I was like, if I was not taking into um, scenario design into consideration, for me, at this point in my Arkham uh, playing and uh, career, uh, Ancient Evils for me is didn't even draw a Mythos card for me. I draw, I draw Ancient Evils and I'm like Poggy, no threats. Nothing I have to solve, I just gotta play the game. Um, but I understand that um, there are situations where Ancient Evils can be bad, 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 not good. Um, and a lot of that actually comes down, uh, it, it, it comes down to scenario design as opposed to the fact that Ancient Evils is bad. Uh, because them getting shuffled back in, like the Doom on a scenario is balanced for, um, the Doom on the scenario is only, um, is designed around Ancient Evils. If Ancient Evils appears in a scenario, the Doom is designed around it. That's the nature of game design, right? Uh, so you should expect in an Ancient Evil scenario that you have like probably realistically one or two Doom additional threshold given to you as, uh, as a player. So because of this, you now know that what the, the Doom on, uh, uh, on the uh, agendas is actually lower. So if you just play in your mind that it is lower, it becomes a lot more manageable. And then Ancient Evils isn't really a problem. Like, Ancient Evils is bad if you are falling behind on tempo. And I don't like to fall behind on tempo. So that's why Ancient Evils, to me, is not a problem. Uh, now you see it in Edge of the Earth where they do not shuffle the encounter decks back in on uh, agenda and act advances at, while Ancient Evils is in the set because they finally have got it. They're like, we know now that Ancient Evils is a totally fine card as long as the Mythos deck does not reshuffle. Once it reshuffles, then Ancient Evils becomes a problem. But as I said, I don't think that's an Ancient Evils thing. I think that is a, a scenario design thing. All right. Crypt Chill, Test Brain 4, if you fail, choose and discard one asset you control. So for me, I'm going to just say right now, this is uh, additionally worse for me because I only play with like two assets, right? Uh, so I like get my Sledgehammer and I'm like, I'm never going to lose this. And then I draw a, froze, a Crypt Chill and I'm like, I'm going to die. <laughs> like this is it for me. Um, but I think for the majority of players who have a lot of assets... This thing is ultimately annoying, but manageable. And I think that's realistically where Crypt Chill needs to live. It's annoying, but it's totally okay, right? Like, you can discard a, uh, a magnifying glass. You can discard something that's near empty. For me, it sits most, but I'm not going to let that paint my actual um, ranking for Crypt Chill. Obscuring Fog. Attach your location, limit one per location, attach gets plus two shroud. After attached location is successfully investigated, uh, discard obscuring fog. Uh, this card is completely manageable. There are times where it gets uh, bad, but like it's basically just asking for you to play an unexpected courage. And if you can't beat an unexpected, if you can't like find an unexpected courage somewhere, in your deck, be an obscuring fog ruins your life. That's probably a deck problem as opposed to an obscuring fog problem because, like, all it's doing is asking for uh, asking for you to play a uh, an unexpected courage. Wow, we're 14 minutes into this video already. This is wild. Mysterious chanting. Place two doom on the nearest cultist enemy. Uh, if there are no cultist enemies in play, search the encounter deck and discard a power for a cultist enemy and draw it and shuffle the encounter deck. 
Um, so this one lives in the not too bad and the this is annoying but manageable theory. And I, uh, it, uh, levels? Uh, I think, uh, I think it's the, this, I think it lives in here because there are situations where mysterious chanting can really ruin your day, but I think it just lives in the, this is annoying, but manageable. It also can be here, but I think there's enough times where this can be like, this can make you go out of your way, right? Like you have a cultist that you're just like, I'm not going to worry about this. And sometimes it can put, uh, a lot of stress on you. So I think that this is annoying but manageable. All right. On Wings of Darkness. Test foot four. If you fail, take one damage, one horror, then disengage from each non Nikon enemy, engage with you, and move to a central location. I recently played a game with um, M, and we were playing in uh, Vanishing of Eleanor Harper. And this card actually was free movement for us in that scenario. It was actually kind of... It was kind of sick. Um, uh... It's kind of, like, nice. I think this one is, like, it can be bad, though. But I think this one is also, it, it lives kind of where Mysterious Chanting lives. That this is annoying but manageable, not too bad. Um, I think, though, I think with Mythos, with Treachery cards, we got to err. If we're stuck between two tiers, we got to move up to the other one, right? Like, sometimes it's really good. And then sometimes it's uh, it's really annoying, right? Uh, but overall, it's kind of just manageable. It is unfortunate when you um, it is unfortunate when you like have to win a night gaunt with you and you move with the night gaunt. Like that's bad. Like that just feels like okay, now I've done nothing. Um, but still, uh, it, it's it, there's times where it's just totally not a problem. Locked door. Um. Oh, so this one can be a little bit annoying, but I think overall this one's just not too bad. You draw a locked door and you're like, all right, goon, this is basically an enemy with one health that I need you to kill, right? Um, so it's, I just need you to break the door down. Uh, I could put it on completely manageable, but uh, you know what? I think this one is going to go on completely manageable. When you think about it, it's basically just a rat with four H with four attack. That's what it really just is. Yeah, don't have much more to say. Yellow sign, test brain four. If you fail, take two horror and search your deck for a madness weakness. Draw that card and shuffle your deck. Um, this card's bad. This card is bad. <laughs> like you draw this and you're having a, 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 that's a bad time. That's a bad time. You might not have the weakness, but this is still just like a, a rotting remains. It's still basically just like a rotting remains. And if you're playing uh, all one or two brain investigators through Path of Carcosa, like I did with the patrons, then that's a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> then it's, oh god, this is really bad. Offer of power. You must choose one. Draw two cards and place two doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance or take to horror. Um, this card is very interesting because... I've never done the draw two cards and place two doom on the current agenda. Um, it's just never fallen into the situation where like it's actually beneficial for me to do that. But really, like if you draw this card last, it's it's essentially just an ancient evils, right? It is just like take Tesla's two horror, uh, which is like not great. Um. Oh. So, like, Hunting Shadow lives in the take two damage, Tesla's. So, like, how does horror compare Tesla's? I think this one is... Oh, my... I don't even... This one stumps me. This is the first one where I'm like... What do I choose for this one? Man, this is going to be a long list. We're, nine, we're 20 minutes into it, and we're not even done the course yet. <laughs> Man, uh, Offer of Power. Where do I put this one? Because as I said, I've never seen the draw two and place two actually be used at, uh, that I can recall. It might, have, it might have happened once, but I know I've never done it because I've never had the window where it was like a good time to do it. But like if the agenda is about to advance next turn, you might as well just draw two cards, right? Especially if you're doing good for time. 
I, uh, I don't think it's bad. I don't know. Shit, where would you put this one? This one I actually have no idea. I suppose it's like, it exists somewhere in these two tiers, right? It exists somewhere in here. I know. I think that this is annoying but manageable because it has an upside. It has an upside to it that is, uh, that it can work with. I'm not going to think about it more. Put Dreams of really into play in your threat area. You get minus one brain and minus one sanity. Test brain three, but it's really like pseudo brain four. If you succeed, discard Dreams of Rillia. Um... It's, uh, this card is, like, potentially has the power to be bad. I've only seen it a few times, but the times that I have seen it, it's like, this is annoying but manageable. There's the idea that if you get it as a mystic, you're like, oh no. But, like, you should be able to solve that problem, right? Like, you should have five brain now because basically it just turns off your holy rosary, right? Um, for rogues... The minus one sanity is the scary part. The minus one brain, you're like, I was already a dummy anyway. Uh, well, intellect is dummy. The uh, book is for dummies, for smart people. But, like, no uh, willpower. But, yeah, I think it just is annoying but manageable. All right. We are in to uh, the Dunnage Legacy. 20 minutes. Finish the core set. All right. We're gonna try, I'm gonna try to pick up the pace on these a little bit because we got a lot to go through. Uh, something in the drinks, I think this card's not too bad. There's situations where it can be really bad, but uh, if your situation's going well, if sorry, if your scenario's going well, you gamble twice, you sell an ally to the mob, and then you uh, get the two clues at the beginning, right? So um, I think that's totally just, uh, totally just fine. It's not too bad at all. There are situations uh, where it can be bad, but uh, I think that it's not completely manageable because those situations can be, assuming someone takes a drink, them losing an action at a, at a very key time can be a bad news bears. Place one doom on each criminal enemy at your location. If no doom was placed by this effect, lose two resources. I think this card's annoying but manageable. Uh, it can actually uh, really put a big pressure on you in the opening stages of the house always wins, but most of the time this just reads two, lose two resources, which is like, uh, in the not too bad tier, losing resources, like, is pretty minor in this game, for me anyway, and also it should be for you, resources are, they're, they're literally expendable, um, but the fact that it could put the Doom on there, uh, the fact, the fact that, that you could put Doom on there, that can be a little bit spooky. Visions of Future Past, Test Brain 5, for each point you fail by, discard the top card of your deck. Honestly, didn't even draw a Mythos card. I see this, and I'm like... <laughs> like I know that there's some synergies in the design in Dunwich Legacy um this can be bad but for me it's uh it's not a problem I I draw this card in my mythos phase and I'm like Poggy I get a play I I'm just gonna fail a brain test and uh discard three cards and then I'm like all right it's my turn right Beyond the Veil so if I was playing, if I was talking about this when just Dunwich came out, uh, this would be in the, uh, oh god, this is really bad tier. Because uh, this card's scary. But I think overall this card just lives in the this is annoying and manageable because you need to have a plan for it, right? Like, you need to have a plan for this card. When you're playing Dunwich at this point now, like if you've played it more than once, you need to have a plan for Beyond the Veil. But I think overall, Beyond the Veil is more annoying than it is uh, Spooky Scary Skeleton. Basically, at that point, you just stop drawing cards. You're like, hands off the wheel, and I get one a turn. And I can, be I can beat this scenario before something bad happens. I've actually never seen Beyond the Veil do its damage. Uh, pretty much ditto, auto-fail token. Pretty much ditto. I have not seen it either, that I can recall. I've never seen it kill somebody, is the correct words there. Uh, and that's why I think it's annoying, but because, of, like, it, it turns your... It turns you, you, it just changes how you have to play, which is where the annoying for me comes from. The Alight of a Forgomon. You must attach it to either the current act or agenda, limit one per act, treat all damage as direct, and all horror as direct. Um, 
This card is this card's actually kind of tough. It can hit at a point where you draw it and it does nothing, right? Like you're like, this is gonna live on the act and agenda for one time. Um, but I think overall, I think it's not too bad. The effect is like, like I'm not planning on taking damage, so the effect on this is like it's just fine. You look at it and you're like. It, it can kill you, and this can, this could just end up killing you. But I think at that point, it's it's kind of out of your hands. It's in the it's in the light of a Forgamon's hands. He's he's doing all the bad stuff there. Um, yeah, I think this one's just not too bad. Unhallowed Country. Put into play in your threat area. You cannot play ally assets. Treat the printed text box of each ally asset you control as if it was blank. At the end of the round, test brain three. If you succeed, discard unhallowed country. Hey, do you know what it doesn't get rid of? Their, uh... Their soak. <laughs> so just kill them. If, you, if you're really concerned and this isn't going to go away, just kill them. Uh, this does have the uh, frozen and fear problem. Uh, where it can just absolutely uh, ruin your day, especially if you have allies that care about it and you're a rogue. But I think this one is... Yeah, my new plan for All Unhallowed Country is just run Dunnage with all events. Amen. Amen, right? Don't do that. It doesn't go well. I have experience. Yeah, card's just uh, completely manageable. Sorted and Silent. Attach it to your location. At the end of the round, each investigator at attached location takes one horror. When the agenda advances, discard Sorted and Silent. Um, I honestly didn't even draw a Mythos card. Uh, there are so much scarier variations of this effect that come later in the game. But in this one, like, I'm just gonna take a horror. <laughs> like, if I want to stay at this location, I'm just gonna take a horror. It's, I didn't even draw a Mythos card with this one. This one goes beyond completely manageable. This one is like... Easy. Eager for death. Test brain 2. Increase the skill death difficulty by 1 for each damage on you. If you fail, take 2 horror. So, um, honestly, I think we're going to see a trend where um, things that deal damage and horror in big amounts like this become the this is bad tier. Uh, this one can be pretty manageable. But it's still just kind of, it's basically just a, it's like a baby rotting remains in a way that just gets harder. Uh, but it has a cap on damage of two. So I think it just lives in the this is bad tier because I'm never happy to see Eager for Death. And I'm never like, this is annoying but manageable. I'm like, oh, this is, I wish I didn't draw this card. I don't like these damn whippoorwills looking at me from the tree. This is bad news bears. And it can be a high skill test too with damage. Oh my god. Curse Luck. Put Curse Luck into play in your threat area. You get minus one skill value during skill test. I have to see the skill test by one or more. Discard Cursed Luck. Um, cursed Luck is bad, especially if you get two of them. If you get one of them, you go to the this is annoying but manageable tier. Uh, it's like, it sucks, but it's overall very manageable. You just have to pass a test. Sometimes it's like not even a problem, but sometimes it can be a problem. And then when you draw two, and it's like bad. But I think just one is annoying. Twist of Fate. Reveal a random token from the Chaos Bag. If you reveal an Elder Sign or positive number, nothing happens. If you reveal any other number, take one damage. If you reveal a symbol, a bad symbol, take two horror. This is great with Bless and Curse tokens. <laughs> they just... Uh, uh, at this point now, it would say, if they designed this today, it would say, if you reveal any other symbol, take two horror. They honestly probably should. They probably should errata this card to say, if you reveal any other symbol, take two horror. Uh, this card is uh, just uh, R uh, RTD, roll the dice, the game. Uh, and I think overall, it's just not too bad, though. I think it's just not too bad. I see this card and I'm like, I'll take one damage, that's fine. If you're wondering what makes these different than this, it's just because, like, uh, we don't have, uh, we don't have the choice. Like, like, we, like, if, if the damage has the, uh, the potential to go over two, 
to go two or higher, it becomes spookier. And Offer of Power, as we said, it has an upside. I don't know. This one could live in the This Is Bad tier, but it currently does not. Okay. Altered Beast. If there are no Abomination enemies in play, Altered Beast gains Surge. Otherwise, choose an Abomination enemy and heal all damage from that enemy and attach Altered Beast to it. When you enter attached enemy's location, or vice versa, take one horror. So, this might be controversial. This might be controversial. But I think, for me, this is the first card where I think, oh god, this one is really bad. Uh, mostly because it will kick the shit out of you in Undimensioned and Unseen. It'll ruin your day in that scenario. Even if it heals no damage, the Altered Beast now just dealing horror to you. Sorry, not the Altered Beast. The uh, uh, Brood of yogg uh dealing damage, like dealing horror to you just by, you know, showing up. It's bad. I think this one is like, this is the first one where I think for me, I look at this card and I think this one is really bad. Sick art though. Really cool art. Hunted down. If there are no unengaged criminal enemies in play, hunted down gains surge. If there are one or more unengaged criminal enemies in play, each of them moves one location towards you. Each criminal enemy that engages you as a result of this effect makes an immediate attack. This card is so annoying in the first scenario when the dude has a loof. <laughs> like, it just frustrates me that this was a thing that happened in there and they, they didn't um, have some sort of clarification for it. I think overall, though, that this card is... Um, I think this card is just annoying but manageable, though. Sometimes it does nothing. Um, but sometimes it can get a dude to come and attack you. Yeah. That's all. I think it's annoying but fine. Push into Beyond. Choose and shuffle a non-story asset you control into your deck and discard the top three cards of your deck. If a copy of that asset is discarded, take two horror. Um, I think it's... I think that this card... I don't think it lives on the... Um, honestly, this one probably lives in the same as... It's annoying, but manageable. If you hit... If you discard the card that you lose, um, that's just a nightmare. Like, this one you don't even have a choice. This one might even be that this is bad, but I think, once again, going to the theory of Crypt Chill, as I was talking about early, earlier, um, it's losing an asset and not testing for that asset is really unfortunate. Um, but, man... This card can really hit you in the face. It can really just spit on you when you're down. It has that potential. Terror from Beyond. Choose one of the following card types. Asset, event, or skill. Each player must discard each card in his or her hand that is the chosen card type. If this is not the first copy of Terror from Beyond drawn this face, choose two card types instead. I'm going to say right now, I love the design on this card. But this card is a, is it's annoying as all hell. It's man, It's completely manageable. Like, it, it doesn't actually, like, really hurt you. Uh, like, it, it has the potential to hurt you. But, like, uh, just choose asset most of the time, right? Like, if people have it, like, as long as it's not the, like, if it's the first turn of the game, you choose skill. If it's, like, the fifth turn of the game, you can choose asset, right? Like, that's kind of how this one works. Um, you never choose event. You never choose event. Just, like, rarely, if ever, choose event. But, like, you could choose asset or skill, depending on the time of the game, no problem. But the thing is, like, someone's going to choose event, and then it's like, why do you do that? And that's why it's annoying. <laughs> why would you choose event? You had an asset in your hand? Why didn't you fucking play it three turns ago? Arcane Barrier. Attach your location. It's additional cost to move into or out of attached location. Test Brain 4. If successful, discard Arcane Barrier. Otherwise, you must uh, either cancel the effect of the move... Or discard the top five cards of your deck. I don't think that this one lives in the um, visions of futures past. I think this one's completely manageable, though. It's totally a okay because you just have your brain guy go through it first. Yeah. 
Okay, we are out of the Dunnage box and we are into the, the Mythos packs, which is now a term that at this point is going to become past lingo. It's kind of wild, huh? All right, Shadow Spawn. All right, this is a weird one. <laughs> Uh, this is a weird one to be raiding. So, it, uh, sh Shadow Spawn remains attached to Hunting Horror. If it enters the void, it gets plus one fight, plus one health, plus one evade for each resource on it. If there's at least three resources on Shadow Spawn, Hunting Horror also gains massive. Um, honestly, I think I need to add a new tier. Which is just like, um... Uh required <laughs> uh and i think that's just over here I, I don't this card doesn't it's not in my rating it's just like uh required <laughs> it's just like it, you have to play it you have to play it stopped in the dark if hunting horrors in play it readies engages you and attacks each uh, investigator location otherwise it gains surge if they had story cards in Dunwich, it would have been a story card instead. I mean, I think they had story cards. I mean, oh, they, had, they, 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 like, they, they would have, yeah. No, you're right, because they, they had assets, but they were like story assets. I think you're, you're right. Yeah, this that probably would have been something else. Uh, Stock in the Dark, I think this one is ultimately not too bad. It can be bad, but most of the time, this will probably just end up being a surge, I think. Um, I don't know. This might be annoying, but manageable. I uh, know my gut says not too bad. My gut says it's not too bad. Yeah, that's what I'm going to sit on this one for. Passage into the Veil. Test Brain 3. This test has plus two difficulty if the hunting ore is at your location. If you fail, you must either choose one, discard the top five cards of your deck, or take one direct damage and deal one damage to each of your ally assets. Hey, this is basically um, just visions of the past. Sure. You can just live down there. That's actually, like, really minor. And if you don't want to discard cards, just take damage. But, like, you also can just, like, discard cards. I didn't even realize that. That art is so much scarier than what the card actually does. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, ephemeral exhibits. Test book three. If you fail, lose one action for each point you fail by. Oh, that's annoying as hell. Um. It's at least here. It's at least in the annoying but manageable tier. Um. I love this card because already there's nothing for fighters to do in, um in the Miskatonic Museum. And then this card says, uh, uh, it's like, get out. <laughs> it's like, you're not even gonna play your turn. Um, honestly, yeah. Action, losing action sucks, but I think, I don't like, very rarely am I, when I lose an action, I'm like, this is bad. It can happen, admittedly, but I think overall, losing an action is like, like, losing your turn sucks, right? But if I lose my turn as the goon in the Miskatonic Museum, I'm like, if is the hunting horror in play? Uh, if he is, okay, this card's bad. If he isn't, it's this is annoying. Um, yeah, I think it's annoying but manageable. Because really, also, you should be with your, uh, your Kluver in a uh, Miskatonic Museum. So they can help you with it. I think it's just more annoying than it is man uh, than it is bad. Something behind you. If hunting horror is in play, add one doom to it. If hunting horror is not in play, search the encounter deck, discard pile in the void for hunting horror and spawn it at your location, engage with you. Shuffle the encounter deck. Alright. This one also might be a little bit controversial. Who knows? But I actually think that this one is also really bad. This card basically dictates the pace of miskatonic museum and if i'm going with my ward of protection check if the hunting horror is not in play i will always always uh 
get rid of this card. If the Hunting Horror is not in play. Because you basically just killed it without killing it. I think that this card, and that to me is where the Oh God, This Is Really Bad lives in. If I will always get rid of it. And I will always get rid of this card. If you draw this on the first Mythos phase in um, the Miskatonic Museum, or like early on in the Miskatonic Museum, congratulations, you've probably just lost. <laughs> or it's going to be a lot harder for you. Because like, the point of... I'm talking too much about... I, I can't talk fucking four minutes about slithering behind you. I I'm already 40 minutes into this video and we're not even out of Dunwich. Claws of Steam. Test Brain 3. If you fail, take two damage. You cannot move from this location this round. Damage this effect must be assigned to your assets first if able. Dude, this card's a fucking beating. This card does so much bad. Wow. I think this one's also really bad. It does so much. This card can kill you. If you draw this at the wrong time and you fail, it's it, it's a death sentence. Yeah, Tyler, exactly. It's it's a death sentence. Like that's it for you. You are you're gone to a better place. All right. Broken rails. Each investigator location loses one action. Each investigator location with four or more damage must also discard an asset he or she controls. Um, so assets admittedly are more valuable in um uh all uh, are also are more valuable in essex than in the previous scenarios we discussed because time is of the essence in essex uh so i think this one probably lives in the bad territory i think yeah i think this one goes beyond annoying just because we're talking about the context of Essex here. With all these other ones we previously talked about, they can show in multiple scenarios um, that we're going to uh, now be able to focus specifically on that scenario. Kidnapped. Test brain or, or foot four. If you fail at an ally asset you control to the pool of potential sacrifices, then attach kidnapped to the current agenda. If you have no ally assets, take two damage and discard kidnapped instead. When attached agenda advances, choose a potential sacrifice at random and place it underneath the agenda deck. I love this card. I love the flavor of this card. This card is really cool. Um, I think overall, though, it's more annoying than it is bad. Uh, it's really funny, though. Like, I, I really want, like, an important ally to get sacrificed here. Like, there's the joke for Duke the Dog, but even if Dr. Milan just gets fucking sacrificed, uh, that would be the, the best day of my life. <laughs> Uh, Cycle Pump Song. Add Cycle Pump Song to any investigator's threat area. Uh, it has Surge and Peril for reference. When you would take one or more damage, take two additional damage and discard Cycle Pump Song. Oh, do I have that in the other one too? Because it shows up here. These two. All right, one second. We're going to add another thing. Add row below. Black. Oh, no, this one's gray. Let's go over here. I, I tried to... Duplicates. I tried to avoid these. Uh, or when I remembered, but I did do these ones these morning, this morning before stream, so I kind of just powered my way through them. Let's move these fuckers up here. Okay. Psycho Pump Song. Um, this card's really bad. This card is going to kill somebody. This card will kill somebody. It's killed Bryn. Travis has killed Bryn with this card in my life. Uh, I think it's just a really bad card because it also has Surge. <laughs> like, this card on its own would still be a thing, Right? Um, but the fact that it also has Surge is what makes it really bad in my books. Strange Signs, Test Book 3. Man, Dunwich had the weirdest uh, Mythos cards. Uh, if you fail, add one clue from the token pool to your location. So this one is specifically for Blood on the Altar. Um, uh, completely manageable. Just like, do an investigate action. <laughs> uh, do an investigate action. Like, uh, it basically just says, hey, do your job, Seeker. Honestly, this one might even be and didn't even draw a Mythos card. <sighs> yeah, no, the dice card's going like back on this one. Like, there's, there's situations, like, as with all of these Mythos cards, where you can, like, take advantage, uh... 
Uh, you can take advantage of them and like use them to your advantage, like in this case with the deny five to fully heal. But rogues don't get that privilege, so I, I gotta I gotta respect the rogues. But also as as I've said, these the, treachery cards are hard to give a grade to for how scary they are because there's so much variety in how you can approach these things. Towering Beasts. Attached to a Brood of Yogg-Soth off enemy in play if that enemy's at location. Attach enemy gets... Oh, and take one damage. Attach enemy gets plus one fight on plus one health. Uh, it is a really memorable experience. That would... It was like the time when I uh, I double denied Yogg-Soth-Hoth or something like that. Or I just denied Yogg-Soth-Hoth's horror and I'm like, that feels like... You feel like a god. That was pretty sick. Um, This card is... Oh, man. It's annoying, but manageable. You have to work a bit harder. It feels worse than it actually is, right? Like, that's... It, it feels worse than it actually is. It's got to be that, right? Like, really, this card is not too bad, but it feels so bad so i think i'm gonna put it in the not too bad because i think it is just like not too bad but it's yeah i think it feels worse than it actually is rune and destruction i love the art on this card if there are no investigators at the same location as a brood of yogg -Soth -Hoth, rune and destruction gains surge otherwise each investigator at the same location as a brood of yogg -Soth -Hoth tests foot three for each point he or she fails by they take one damage a, why are you at a location with a brood of yogg -Soth off? That's bad news bears. Like, I understand you want to kill them, but man, that's going to suck. <laughs> um, I suppose they can move to you during the enemy phase. Um, otherwise, this is basically just like a grasping hand that doesn't trigger all the time. Uh, so it's probably a tier lower because it's it, there's times where it just doesn't do anything. Each brood of Yogg-Soth enemy in play moves once towards you. Surge. Oh, there's the, the one-two combo punch. Uh, annoying, but manageable, I think. It can be bad, but I think it's still just annoying. Um, I mean, it also could be bad, but it also could be good. It also could be good. You're basically like, all right, now we're going to start killing this guy. And then, I mean, you drop Rune and Destruction afterwards, then it's bad. They have Altered Beast attached to them. Oh my god, there's a freaking... Towering Beast. I'm not even talking about, like, a magical Christmas land. This is actually just something that happens in Undimensioned and Unseen. The Creature's Tracks. You must either choose one, take to horror, or spawn a set-aside Brood of Yogg-Sothoth at a random location. That's bad. <laughs> That's just bad, yo. That's a tough card. That's a tough one. I would not be happy to draw that card. There's a card in this game called Wright's Howled. Discard the top three cards of each investigator's deck. Each investigator in altered location shuffles each weakness and his or her discard pile into his or... Oh, that's why I don't know what it's... Uh, it's didn't even draw a fucking Mythos card. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, sick. No Mythos phase. So sweet. Spaces Between. Oh my, I hate this card. It's, uh, it's not bad. It's just annoying. It's just like, it's, it's not, like, it's not even like annoying in, the, in these ones. It's just like annoying because it does nothing. Didn't even draw a Mythos card, baby. Vortex of Time. Each investigator Sentinel Hill location test brain four. Each investigator who fails takes two damage. That's, that's tough. That's a tough card. Uh, it fits in the world of these, but I think... Nah, because that can hit everyone. I think it's... I just gotta respect the... I gotta respect the, the... The... Rotting Remains Light. Right? And it affects multiple people. If your Mythos card affects me, we got a problem. We're gonna talk after the game. Collapse in Reality. If you're at an extra dimensional location, discard it and take one damage. Otherwise, take two damage. Oh. That's bad. So we're in lost in time and space here, and that's a bad time. 
That just that's just a lot. That's just damage. And it also is horror if you're at an extra dimensional location, I believe. I haven't played Lost in Time and Space for a while. Haha, ha, I get it. I lose in where Duma waits the last two times I played Dunwich. I was playing Jank! I was playing Jank, okay? Be kind to me. Um, but yeah, I believe that is what happens in Lost in Time and Space. Wormhole. Discard cards to the top of the encounter deck until a location is discarded. Resolve that location's revelation ability, then move to that location. I think that's bad. I think it's more probably like... It's probably more like a this is annoying but manageable tier. I think so. Vast Expanse. If there are no extra dimensional locations to play, Vast Expanse game sure. Surge, otherwise test brain X, where X is the number of extra dimensional locations to play for each point you fail by take one horror? Oh my god! This is like uh this is like Udmordoth, baby, so this is gonna be bad. That's Udmordoth's wrath. Alright. 50 minutes and we're in Carcosa. So let's just let's do some math. So 30 minutes in expansion, Carcosa, Forgotten Age, that's an hour. Oh my god, we have two and a half hours of this left, potentially. Oh my god! Okay, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Alright. Fine dining. Peril. You must either place one of your clues on a bystander asset in play or take one horror and one damage. Um, that's bad. That's bad. You gotta work hard for some of those bystander assets. Right? Um, we could make it a two-parter. I was, I was thinking more of Tresmillion about my day today. Uh, because I wanted to play video games this afternoon. <laughs> uh, so fine dining. You must either place one of your clues on I think it's just bad. It's an annoying card. Um, you could take a damage and a horror. So maybe it is just kind of annoying because, like, you can have a downside that's, like, you can just, like, all right, just ping me. Ping me, baby. So, yeah, it probably lives there because it is manageable. You can just get pinged. Yeah. Thinking about it more, you can just ping yourself. Tough crowd. That's Twitch chat whenever I try to make a joke. Put tough crowd into play next to the agenda deck. Each investigator must spend one additional action to parlay. At the end of the round, discard tough crowd. Uh, most of these are going to kind of live in the annoying but manageable tier because it can, like, throw a, um, a wrench into your, uh, into your plans. But it's completely manageable. You can just do other things or even just spend the additional action to parlay. Right? Ah! The secret, the hidden card. So... You cannot commit skill cards to skill tests. You cannot move more than once each turn. You cannot trigger lightning bolt abilities. I think overall, and there's one more. Uh, you cannot play events. I think overall, these all realistically live in the not too bad tier. They can be annoying, but I think, honestly, they're just... They're just all, like, to the point where they're fine. If you have at least three horror on you, lose one action. I love this card. I think the design on this card's really cool, and it scales very interesting with interestingly with the game. And I think it's a cool design, um, but overall, I think it's just, like, not too bad. I think it's overall just kind of fine as well. It's all living in over here. Ah, where's Chain Dreamer? I know Chain Dreamer hates this card. Test foot six. If you fail, reveal the top X cards in counter deck where X is the amount you failed by. If at least one Biaki is revealed by this effect, choose and draw one of them. If at least one Omen card is revealed by this effect, take one horror and shuffle the encounter deck. Uh, something that draws an enemy sucks because it's kind of like you drew two, um, two Mythos cards. So we're going to go in the this is annoying but manageable, but I don't think we're in the the bad. It could be bad. No. You know what? No, I'll respect it. I'll res No, it, it, yeah, I look at these other ones and this is this is much softer than this. It's pretty fine. It's this is annoying, but nah. Black Stars Rise, test book four. If you fail, you must either place one Doom on the current agenda or take one Horror for each point you failed by. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. 
Wow. That's bad. This is basically just a rotting remains with, uh... Whoa. <laughs> uh, wild. Yeah, that's bad. But you also can just place a Doom on the agenda. You can also basically just turn this into an Ancient Evil. So I think it's just annoying. Now that you think, when I think about it for more than a second. But like, I actually think because... No, it's annoying but manageable. It's not bad. It's not bad. Because if, you, if you're going to fail this, just turn it into an Ancient Evils. And everyone's going to be mad at you, but just say, don't worry, Ancient Evils are okay. Spires of Carcosa. Attach the location, then place two Doom on that location. If no Doom on attached location, discard it. If you succeed as an in action, investigate, discover. Instead of discovering clues, remove one Doom from attached location. Uh, everything lives in the this is annoying but manageable tier. This one's annoying, but it's totally fine. It can totally ruin your day. This actually happened to me recently in a run on the channel. Uh, and uh, it ruined my day. But I don't think that I'm going to hold that against the card. Because it like literally is manageable. You just investigate twice. And as long as you're not playing like Stella Clark as your main investigator, you're going to be okay. Twisted to his will. There's no Doom in play. Twisted to his will gains Surge. Otherwise, Test Brain X for X is the amount of Doom in play. If you fail, discard two cards at random from your card. Uh, two cards from your hand at random. Um, honestly, these are all going to be completely manageable. Actually, sorry, not too bad. No, this one's completely manageable. Let's put Point Tasty has about Spires. I think because it it does actually hose four of the five colors for how to deal with it. I think I am going to put it up in the this is bad. Because in a Mystic, you're probably better off... Um, you're probably better off actually um, just wording it. And I think that's that's very fair, so... I think, you're, I think you're absolutely correct. Anyways, Twisted to His Will, the reason why it's completely manageable is just because, like, cards in your hand don't matter right like it's literally an expense like it's like the same as resources right like it's a completely expendable resource so like it's okay if i have to discard cards it's like it's not even like it's annoying but not to the level that the annoying tier is spirits torment Attached location, after you leave attached location, you must either take one horror or lose one action. Place one of your clues on attached location, discard Spirit's Torment. Um, this card is kind of annoying, but manageable. Mostly because it creates a memory issue, and I hate memory issues. We're going to see that being a theme, that some of these cards are going to get, like, up a tier, just because they're, uh, you can forget about them. Dance of the Yellow King. If there are no lunatics enemies in play, Dance of the Yellow King gains Surge. Otherwise, test Brain 3. If you fail, the nearest lunatic enemy readies... Moves one location at a time until it reaches your location, engages you, and makes an immediate attack. Uh, question. What happens if it uh, enters a location with another investigator? Does it just stop on them? Because it doesn't gain prey only you. Because I think that's how they'd word it today. How does that work otherwise? Does it, like, engage on the way and says, hey, how's it going, and then keeps going? It's like, hey, how's it going, Steve? How's it going, uh, Roland? I'm going to keep going over to Rex over here. Um, I think this one, though, is honestly just... It says it engages you. But why would it say moves one location at a time? But, like, is there a rule that states it can't engage an investigator that it moves into its location with? Is there, like, is that something that only happens during the enemy phase, like, when Hunter goes? Um, this one's, like, completely manageable. It's actually probably not too bad. 
it's probably not too bad. It can be scary and spooky, but I think it's just, um, yeah, no, it's probably, because the, the lunatic enemies are pretty spooky. But I think it's just, uh, it's going to be annoying but manageable. Just because the lunatic enemies are are notably spooky. The King's Edict. For each cultist enemy in play, move one clue from that enemy's location to that enemy. Until the end of the round, each cultist enemy in play gets plus one fight for each clue and or doom on it. If no clues are moved by this effect, the King Edict gains surge. Interesting design. Um, but I think it's just not too bad. It's not too bad. Ooze and Filth. Put Ooze and Filth in play next to the agenda deck. Each location gets plus one shroud. At the end of the round, discard Ooze and Filth. Hey! Didn't even draw a Mythos card, baby. That's just fine. That's just A-okay. You see that and you're like, all right, uh, Poggy, it's my turn. Corrosion. Discard item assets from play and or from your hand with a total printed co resource cost of at least X, where X is the shroud value of your location. If no cards are discarded by this effect, uh... Corrosion gains Surge. Uh, honestly, this one's not too bad. So they engage the investigators that moves through the location but immediately disengages them. That makes sense. That totally makes sense, uh, especially with the design space that the lunatics fit into. Cool. I mean, that was my, uh, my hunch from it, so I'm actually happy about that. I actually nailed it for once. Um, yeah, corrosion's just, like, fine. It can, there's times where it's bad, but, like, you have a shroud of two and you're like, see you later, this thing. If you don't hit the threshold, um, because it's at least X, it just surges, I think it's totally A-OK. -okay. Like, you're on a five shroud location and you have, like, three cost of items. It sucks when you have to lose a bunch, but I think that's gonna fall, I think I'm gonna, like, put it down over here. I think it's just, like, meh. I've seen it surge more than I've seen it affect the game. Marked by the sign. Test brain 2. If you fail, take 2 horror. If the man in the pallid mask is in play, the horror dealt by this effect is considered direct. And this test has plus 2 difficulty. And it has peril. That's a this is bad if I've ever seen one. The pale mask beckons. If the man in the pallid mask is in play, he attacks each investigator in player order regardless of his current location. The man in the pallet mask is not in play. Search the bearer's deck, discard, draw a pile, and shuffle him. Uh, uh, just put him into play. <laughs> just put him into fucking play. So much text. Just like, I know they have to put it on there, but that's so funny. Um, he attacks for what? One horror? I think it's just, like, annoying, but fine. Like, what makes it annoying is the fact that, like, everyone takes damage. Like, takes horror. Um, putting him into play is... Uh, not the end of the world. But I don't think it lives in this not-too-bad tier. Led astray. Peril. You must decide. Place one of your clues on a call to send me. Place one doom on the current agenda. This effect may cause the current agenda to advance. So this is in Echoes of the Past, right? Echoes of the Past is, like, uh, to me as a scenario, is completely manageable. So a lot of the cards we're going to see here are going to be completely manageable. If there is a Cultist Enemy in play with uh, Doom on it, move all Doom from each Cultist Enemy to the current agenda. This effect can cause it to advance. If there are no Cultist Enemies in play with Doom on them, search the Encounter deck and discard Pile for a Cultist Enemy and draw it. Shuffle the Encounter deck. So this could cause you to advance, but once again, as I told, as I said above... I think that Echoes of the Past is a completely manageable scenario, so uh, the cards here are completely manageable. Uh, excuse me, you're not supposed to see this. I'm just trying to put up my gain on my camera. All right, Straight Jacket. Ah, so this card will never not anger me with how it works with um, the Necro with Daisy's Necronomicon. Shake my damn head. If there's no copy of Straight Jacket in your threat area, put Straight Jacket into play in your threat area as an asset that takes up a body slot and two hand slots. Return each of those assets to your hand, which is so much kinder than them discarding it. They could have had this discard them. They could have had this discard those cards. Uh, this card cannot leave play except by the ability below. Double action. Discard Straight Jacket. 
Um, this fits into the annoying but manageable. Uh, if you're the seeker, this is like not, not going to do too much trouble. Like, oh no, my magnifying glasses. Kind of annoying if you're playing Hawkeye folding camera because you have to like reset it all. But if you're playing Carcosa, probably don't play Hawkeye folding camera just because of straight jacket, right? It's annoying, but it's completely manageable to work around. What about the king in yellow for straight jacket? I believe it works the exact same way. I just, and it, it's annoying. Where are those, where are those hands coming from, designer? Where are those hands coming from? And don't give me the flavor that they're carrying in the straight jacket. If they put the fucking straight jacket on you, there's no way that they were like, here's your book, lady. You were holding this book. Have this book back. My God, it's stupid. Gift of Madness, Pity Art. These are all... We have two of them. Um, I guess, yeah, Dendromorphosis would work the same way. That one at least makes sense because you have stick hands. Stick hand can hold book. Straight jacket, you're in a fucking straight jacket. Gift of Madness, Pity. And also Gift of Madness, Misery. So the Pity one is you cannot attack lunatic enemies. And the other one is you cannot trigger action abilities on locations, and you can place an enemy in the uh, beneath the act deck to put them, get rid of them. And, and these also can live in the not too bad tier. Actually, so this one can, yeah, they're both they're both just not too bad. They're both just not too bad. King and Yellow could be stuck in your waistband. It is a play. You're right. Those little playbooks, they're like, they're a lot, they're a lot thinner than like the giant Necronomicon. Walls closing in. Test Brain X, where X is the shroud value of your location. If you fail, you must either take one horror for each point you fail by, or randomly choose one enemy from among the set-aside monster enemies and place it beneath the deck without looking at it. Uh, lives in the same kind of, uh, this is annoying but manageable tier. It sucks that you have to put a monster beneath the deck, but I mean, like, that's better than taking potentially five horror. Man, I love uh, the Unspeakable Oath. That's a great scenario. Twin Sons, test book four. If you fail, you must either remove one Doom from the current agenda or take one horror for each point you fail by. Whoa. <laughs> uh... This is such a neat card because of the design. Uh, uh, the design of these cards, the scenario is so unique, right? Phantom of Truth. Man, Carcosa is such a good campaign. I haven't played it in a while. I should play it again soon. A while for me, I think, is like three months. <laughs> All right, test, uh, test book four. I think, man, oh, no, the end is in sight. The end is in sight, he said, with some massive amounts of copium. I think that this one is also just kind of annoying, but manageable. Deadly Fate, test brain three. If you fail, discard cards to the top of the counter deck until an enemy is discarded. You must either draw that enemy or the enemy attacks you from the discard pile. If no enemy is discarded, take one horror instead. Um, probably a not too bad. Because you can choose to draw the enemy if you're the fighter and then you just kill it. If you're the seeker, you could just draw it and the fighter can kill it. I think it's a pretty minor card. I think it's not too bad. Ah, the Bryn special. Torturous Chords. Test Brain 5. If you fail, put Torturous Chords into playing your threat area with one resource on it for each point you fail by. Each time you play a card, increase the cost of that card by one and remove one resource from Torturous Chords. If Torturous Chords has no resources on it, discard it. I recently had this card actually, like, affect me. Like, most of the time, because I play, like, non, um, like, it's fine for me. Like, because I play a lot of skill cards, and, like, I, my assets are already out, so I'm probably, like, able to make it work. But I had it in a deck where I actually didn't want to play things, and it's annoying. And it's not even manageable. But, uh, hear me out. Uh, it's ultimately just not too bad. <laughs> it slows you down a bit, but it's okay. It's fine. Like, it turns your emergency caches bad. Who cares, right? Like, it, it makes your order protections cost two. That's bad. But, like, does it really matter? Does it really matter? No. I don't think it really matters. 
If you get a few torturous, torturous, torturous chords that stack, it is worse. Oh, that is very true. That is very true. That's where it lives in the this is bad level, but I think on its own, it's kind of still just not too bad. Eyes in the walls. Test brain three. For each point you fail by, take one horror. When assigning horror from this effect, it must be divided as evenly as possible among eligible cards. Hey, that's just, uh, I've seen you before. You're rotting remains. The shadow behind you. Put the shadow behind you into playing your threat area. Limit one per investigator. You look, at, you look behind you. At the end of your turn, if you not uh, perform the above action ability, you must either discard all your resources or discard all cards in your hand, then discard the shadow behind you. This card basically just reads, for your turn, play, uh, play as much you can, and then either lose all of your cards or all of your resources, whichever you have fewer of. So this one lives in the, honestly, they didn't even draw a Mythos card area. It's cool design, though. I love the design of the card. Uh, the Pit Below. Revelation. Attach the location if there is another copy of Pit Below attached. The attached location gets plus one Shroud. At the end of the round, each investigator attached location takes three damage. Discard the Pit Below. So this is one of those cards where I was talking about, like, actually are kind of spooky. Um, even though, like, you can really work around it, this one is bad. Uh, I'm very rarely happy to see a pit below, and it can really throw a wrench in your plans. Um, I think it's not, like... Um, like, realistically, it should live in this is annoying but manageable, but I am not often happy to see a pit below, and it can really ruin your day. It can really ruin your day. Crashing Floods. Test foot three. If you fail, the agenda is 1A in play. Take one damage and lose one action. If agenda 2A... Oh my god. I don't think I've ever taken damage from pit below. I don't think I've ever taken damage from pit below either, but I've had to change my plans a bunch for pit below um, to the point where it's always like we have to... I can remember times where we've had to stop our entire game plan and been like, what can we do? to? How can we best take advantage of this scenario? And sometimes that means people lose progress. And while like that can fit in the this is annoying, I'm just going with like once I said, I see the card, I see Pippolo, and I'm like, oh, this is, this is going to be bad. Uh, this card's a fucking brick. Sh like this is a shithouse. Like this is a, this is a really bad card. Hey, um, do you know what, uh, do you know what would be great for Rotten Remains? If it also just, like, sucked all your actions off of it. Um, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give credit, I'm gonna give respect where respect is due. Uh, uh, no. Losing three cards is, is less bad than losing three actions. I think we can all agree on that, right? No, but you just fail. Nah, it's 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 just it's not even a scaling. It's yeah, no, this is really bad. It doesn't scale. The when the fact that it doesn't scale is what makes it a really bad, like a really bad, hard hitting treachery card for sure. Dismal Curse. Test Brain 3. If you have no remaining sanity, this test gets plus 2 difficulty. If you fail, take 2 damage. 4 damage instead. If you have horror on you, greater than twice your sanity. Yeah, I mean, this is bad. That's how you die in uh, Dim Carcosa. Right? That's how you die in Dim Carcosa. Realm of Madness. Discard cards from play under from your hand with a total printed cost. Of at least X, where X is the amount of horror on your investigator card. If no cards are discarded by this effect, take two horror. This is like corrosion, but worse. Where did I put corrosion? Over here. Um, 
the no cards discarded is much worse. So I think as well that this card's gonna just be bad. I think this card is also just like, it's bad when you draw this card. You're like, ah, oh, fuck. Cause this one doesn't care specifically about items. This one just cares about cards. Yeah. I do also love treacheries that scale with Acton Agenda. I feel like the reason why they don't do it too commonly is because there's a lot of text on the card, but I do agree. They're really fun and I do like the dread they bring as well. The final act, Surge. If you have no remaining sanity, place two doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. And it surges, baby. And it keeps going. Um, honestly, though, this is annoying but manageable. Just don't have san just have sanity remaining. <laughs> just do that. Like, it's that's how you beat it. Alright, so we have the three possessions. So if you've heard greater than twice your sanity, you are immediately killed. Deal two damage to investigate location. Spend five resources, and you make, make you may commit this card to a skill test your location. This that test automatically fails. Oh, so that one's the easy one. This one is like, um, spin on window to another time for me. You you know it. They these cards can kill you, but like don't let them kill you. Um, this one lives in the uh, not too bad. And the other two I'm going to put into the this is annoying but manageable phase. Because like... <sighs> the best way to play Dim Carcosa is obviously don't have sanity that will kill you on it. It can happen, but like at the same time like... You can just like play around it by having soak, having healing, being... Managing it, right? So it's annoying, but manageable. On the blind playthrough, these cards were brutal. That is absolutely 100% fact. You are 100% right there. The blind playthrough, they're, they're tough, right? But uh, once you know Carcosa, they're very manageable. Oh, we're in the Forgotten Age. All right, we're in the Forgotten Age. Yay. Let's go. All right, overgrowth. Attached location, limit one per location. You cannot explore an attached location. Test Fist 4 to hack through the brush, or test Book 4 to find another route. If you can succeed, discard it. So this is pretty much just like uh, a locked door, um, but only for exploring. And you would think that this is on the same level as locked door. And I think it isn't. Because in the Forgotten Age, it's harder. <laughs> it's a harder scenario. So, like, this is one that I think is, like, this is the annoying but manageable tier. Because it can really ruin your day. It can really ruin your day. Voice of the Jungle. Put Voice of the Jungle to play in your threat area. After the end of your turn, if you do not successfully explore this turn, take one horror. Test Brain 3. If you succeed, discard Voice of the Jungle. Wow. Um, this card is bad. This card is bad. <laughs> it, it, this one is also honestly really close to uh, really bad. But um, I think I'm just going to put it in the bad tier. Successfully explore? That basically reads, hey, do you want to draw a treachery card for your treachery card? Oh. <sighs> I think it's just going to be in the bad tier, though. I think it's just going to be in the bad tier. I don't think I'm going to put it up with these other guys in the really bad tier. Because these ones can, like, really ruin your day. A Mystic can help you with this. With Frozen and Fear, a Mystic can't help you with it. In terms of taking the test. Snakebite, baby! Is this video trending to be four hours? I think I'm estimating it to be three and a half hours. I think we're estimating it to be three and a half hours. So we have at least probably two hours left of this. Um, test uh, foot three. If you fail, you must either choose one. Deal five damage to an ally as you control. Take one direct damage. If you're not poisoned, put a set aside poison weakness into play in your threat area. Um, this card, uh, you tech for it. You tech for it. Um, I I'll be honest. I'm going to say right now, I do think that being poisoned is not as scary as I originally thought it was, right? Um, but uh, the fact that Bryn tests 
uh, uh, he uh, plans for this one, uh, I think that this card is just has the potential to be really bad. If you draw this before you have an ally in play, um, you're like, oh no. <laughs> oh, frick. Yeah, it's like the signature treachery of the Forgotten Age, I agree. Lost in the Wilds, test brain three. If you fail, take one horror for each point you fail by and add Lost in the Wilds to your threat area. You cannot move or explore. At the end of the round, discard Lost in the Wilds. Hey, I know you. Your Rotting Remains. So into the Rotting Remains tier with you. Low on supplies. Peril. You must decide. Each investigator loses two resources. Each investigator takes one damage. Each investigator chooses to discard an asset he or she controls. Um, not bad. It can be bad. Like, but I'll always choose the resource option if I can. And I don't care if it causes Travis to die. I'll always choose it. I like it. Curse of Yig. Put Curse of Yig into play in your threat area. You get minus one fist, minus one health, and gain the Serpent Trait. Test Brain 2. This test gets plus one difficulty for each Vengeance point in the victory display. If you succeed... Oh, Travis is here? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, uh, it gets plus one difficulty for each Vengeance point in the victory display. If you succeed, discard Curse of Yig. Um... Uh, I think this one's kind of just, where did I put the Cthulhu one? And it's annoying but manageable. I think they live in the same tier. I think they live in the same tier. It's annoying. Getting it as the goon kind of sucks uh, if you can't solve it yourself. If you have a lot of vengeance, it becomes worse. I think it's just annoying but manageable, though. Arrows from the trees. Take one damage plus one additional damage for each ally as you control. Each other investigator in an ancient location must also resolve that effect. Um, the best part in the, for, in Untamed Wilds is when you parlay, uh, Ishtaka and arrows from the trees now do nothing. This card is absolutely brutal. Um, I think it's a, this is bad. I want to put it up here, but I don't think... I think I put it on the this is bad one. I don't think it goes down. I don't think it goes up one more. Yeah. Final mistake. Test foot two. This test gets plus one difficulty for each doom on your location. If you fail, take two damage. All right, this can live in the this is bad tier. A test with damage. Difficulty increases. Two is very manageable. But I don't think, I don't look at this card and I go, oh, this is annoying. I look at this card and I'm like, ah, oh, this is bad. I don't want to take this test, right? I don't want to take that test. Sled Dog Leo taking five damage from this. Yeah, Sled Dog Leo, he should know that the Etzlies hate Sled Dogs. He should have known that before he brought them into the jungle. Entombed. Put Entombed into play in your threat area. You cannot disengage from enemies or move. I have the best memories of this card and Travis saving Bryn and I from our being entombed when we did our draft run, which is like legitimately one of the funniest things in the world because he was Preston Fairmont. Um, but I love this card. It's very fun. It's very flavorful. So you can test foot four or fist four to escape the tomb. If you succeed, discard it. If you fail, reduce the difficulty of this test by one until the end of the round. Um, there's going to be someone who can help you with this more likely. Uh, I think, I think this one's going to be annoying over being, um, not too bad. It's definitely not bad, but I definitely, I do think it is annoying. I do think it's annoying. A tear in time. Test brain three. For each point you fail by, you must either lose one action or take one horror. So, following some of the previous, uh, rankings I have here... This card should, in theory, fit in the this is uh, annoying but manageable. But I do think that this one still just lives with the Rotting Remains variants. It's a bad card. You're not happy to see it. You fail by three and you're like, ah, right? Like, it's bad. Like, even just like, like, if it was fail three and you lose uh, horror, you're like, okay, I'm fine. But as soon as you like now have to make a choice, like, okay, how many actions can I afford to lose? And sometimes you can fail by one and you lose an action and it's like completely manageable. But I do think we got to put some respect on the card uh, and how it is basically still just a rotting remains. Lost in time. Shuffle a non-story asset you control into your deck, moving all damage and horror from that asset to your investigator. If no asset is shuffled into your deck by this effect, choose and discard three cards from your hand. Crap! 
Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. This one's interesting. The if it fits into the things of living with the removing assets, um, I think it still just kind of lives in the uh, this is annoying but uh, manageable because like um a magnifying glass right like at this point like this this hurts a player like me a lot more than it hurts a player like Bryn right but Bryn is probably still even like this is annoying I wanted my liquid courage or he might be like this is sweet my liquid courage just got refilled right um I think it's annoying but manageable yeah it fits with the others Ill Omen, choose a location where there's at least one investigator, place one doom on that location. Each investigator that shows the location takes one horror. Also has perils, so you can't talk with them. This is a bad card. It can be manageable, but the what pushes pushes it up is that in uh, the scenarios where this one appears, doom is not removed from locations, I believe, anyways. I know it's at the very least in the, um, the Doom of Esli. And it also is in Heart of the Elders Part 2. I don't believe Doom is removed from those locations, which does make Ill Omen um, a little bit more dangerous. Ancestral Fear. Place one Doom on your location and discard Ancestral Fear instead of placing it in the Victory Display. You can also place it in the Victory Display. That's Vengeance 1. Peril and Surge. You must either choose one. Um, so... You might be wondering, Justin, Ancient Evils ain't that bad. Why is this one so bad for you? It's because the Doom doesn't leave play on these ones. And it can cause, and Doom on locations is, can sometimes be worse, especially in those ones. Um, the Vengeance is also a little bit spooky, right? Uh, it also has Surge. <laughs> Let's not forget that. It also has Surge. Uh, to me, I actually think this card is is really bad. I just think this card's really bad. Yeah. Because it's not your card. Like, with, with Ancient Evils, it sucks, right? Where is it? It's over here. Hi, it's hiding right next to me. Hello! With Ancient Evils, it's bad because, like, you, um... Sorry, it's not that bad because like it just it's it's just ancient evils. And you're like, okay, doom on the thing. This one is ancient evils, and then it also you draw another card. And that's what makes it just like spooky. Up note, there is a scenario, specifically Black Stars Rise, where ancient evils gain surge, but that's once again not an ancient evil problem. That's a that's a car that's a scenario problem there. Deep Dark, put Deep Dark in play next to the agenda deck. No more than one clue may be discovered from each location by each investigator each round. At the end of the round, discard one copy of Deep Dark from play. So this card reads as something that's just totally not bad, right? Like it's like not, it's like, it's annoying but manageable. But this card uh, disrupts your tempo so much that I'm putting in this one into the this is bad. Like, it's one of those things where you draw it, most of the time you draw it, you're like, okay, this is fine. And then sometimes you draw it and you're like, this has just really slowed us. And as Lord Blink says, it scales with players dramatically, right? Um, I think it just like really hinders tempo. Eh, I'm going down. I've talked my down. We're going to put it in the this is annoying but manageable tier. Um, in the... Uh, I think if you're playing with... Uh, oh, man, I don't know. It could be here. No, I think it's... Weird. I I've talked myself down. This is going back to this is annoying but manageable. Uh, because, like, the first one's not a problem. If you draw them three turns in a row, then it's a problem, but I think that's less on the card and more on the, uh, the phase. Like, the, the luck of the shuffle. <sighs> shadowed. Revelation. If there are no cultist enemies in play, take one horror and shadowed gain surge. Otherwise, find the cultist enemy nearest to you, place one doom on that enemy, and test brain X, where X is that enemy's fight value. If you fail, take two horror. I hate this card. Not just because I always see the dumb uh, Barkham dog on it whenever I look at it. Not just because of that. But also just because, like, this card just, like, always is on. Like, 
even when it surges, it's still like, here, have a horror for your time, right? Like, have a horror for your time. Yeah, this card, uh, this card I'm putting into the, uh, this is bad. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where that one lives. Words of power, put words of power into play in your threat area. If there are one or more uh, enemies in your location with doom on them, you cannot damage those enemies or discover clues at your location. Discard words of power. Uh, this one is completely manageable. Like, it literally just says, hey, spend two actions and get rid of me, right? It's it's just something that's very just very manageable. Snake scourge, put snake scourge to play in your threader. If you're poisoned, gain surge. Treat each non-weakness item asset and, uh, as if its text box was blank at the end of the round. Discard it. Um, completely manageable. Those it having surge is what makes it a little bit scarier. A non that didn't even draw a mythos card, but also still just kind of fine. Serpent's call. Eldritch Horror Yig. You must either put a set aside, poison weakness into playing your threat area, or draw the top two cards of the encounter deck. Whoa. <laughs> oh god, that's really bad. That's just like, uh... Uh, no thank you? Like, that's double surge? And those cards might have surge? Uh, yeah, you, you want it in over... I mean, like... Overzealous hurts because it's in the player phase. Like, it's in the, uh, it replaces your draw. And this is, I mean, like, it's, it's less, it's the same thing. It just sucks. It's just a bad card. Oh, God, this is really bad. Surge, each investigator's poison takes one damage. I think this card is, uh, worse because it just does nothing most of the time. It just surges. Um, but I think it's overall not too bad. <laughs> I think it's overall not too bad. Most often, like, one person's poisoned and they can get killed by this. But if you're poisoned, you need to be aware that damage is crucial and you should have some extra ways to deal with it. It's almost annoying because of, like, you it just does nothing most of the time and it just surges, but what can you do? The Seeker must be kept. Peril, test brain three. If you fail, take one damage and one horror. For each act deck, the investigators completed the skill test gets plus one difficulty, deals plus one damage and plus one horror. Yo, this one's really bad. That's a really tough mythos, a treachery card. That's really tough. It's like, hey, you're doing good. You're nearing the end. You're really, like, running down on resources. Take three horror and three damage, you fucking nerd, right? Like, it, it, it demands a lot. And the test is, like, a five? Yeah, it's a tough card. Tough card. Nobody's home. Attach your location. If there are no clues on your location, nobody's home gains surge. You must spend one additional action to reinvestigate attached location. If there are no clues on attached location, discard nobody's home. Um, this card's annoying, but manageable. I don't think it's bad, but it is, it is definitely annoying. It's definitely annoying. Here's, uh, here's my advice to deal with nobody's home. Just be good and get all the clues before it shows up. In four-player, you basically just can't investigate the location anymore. Yeah, it is true. It is true. But I think that... <coughs> I think that there are ways that you could potentially... As long as it's not on the Miskatonic University, most of them are just like uh, one clue... If it's not on the Miskatonic University or one of like the core locations... Um, like the the curiosity shop or the, or the whatever the... Not the diner, but the police station or the train tracks. Um, it's it's pretty. It's still fine because you can just like try to like make up for that action and just be like tempo neutral, right? Um, and in four players, if you're on, if someone's on an important location, your fucking mystic with a water protection level two should be there with them. Uh, so I think in four players, it could be like it should be in the this is bad, but I think overall this card is. Still just more manageable on the player counts I commonly play at, which is two and three. It's annoying, but manageable. Conspiracy of Blood. Attached to Conspiracy of Blood to the current agenda. It gets minus one Doom Threshold. Each cultist enemy gains parlay 
brain four. If you succeed, discard one copy of Conspiracy of Blood from play. If you fail, place one Doom on the enemy. Whoa. Uh, this is basically like an Ancient Evils. If you really like, it's like basically just like an Ancient Evils. If you draw this when you're about to turn next turn, it's like, you know, like everyone's really happy. Everyone stands up and claps. Um, but I do think it's still just kind of annoying but manageable. It lives in this one. This is like the big, like, this is where we're going to see the majority of the cards, right? Because most treachery cards are annoying but very manageable. <laughs> Otherwise the game would be awful. All right. Window to another time. Peril. You must choose one. Choose and shuffle an ancient location back into the exploration deck. The present day location underneath it takes its place. Place one doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Huh. So. This one's basically just an ancient evils. However, I believe in the latter half of the scenario, it's not... It's basically just you just shuffle a card back in because the latter half doesn't matter, right? Am I correct with that in the second half of the scenario? Because this one's tough. In the first half, this card is a nightmare. In the second half, this card is easy. I do think, though, we got to give some respect to Boundary Beyond. We gotta give respect for Boundary Beyond. Boundary Beyond is already a very tight scenario and very demanding from the players. And Window to Another Time can be really tough. I think we just gotta give respect to this card and Boundary Beyond. Because in that scenario, I think this card's bad. Is it really bad? No, because worst case scenario is just an Ancient Evils, right? Timeline destabilization. Test brain one. This test gets plus one difficulty for its ancient location to play. If you fail, take one damage and one horror and shuffle timeless timeline destabilization into the exploration deck. Um, I think that this card is bad. I think I'm gonna go one step further. No, I think this card's just bad. I don't think it's really bad. I think it's just bad. How about Test Brain 7? But luckily at that point, um, luckily at that point, it, you don't need to, uh, in, you don't need to explore. Um, I, I do think, no, I think, I think I'm going to put it in the really bad tier because it, it basically, you draw from the encounter deck, you fail, because uh, Bryn draws it and he's playing uh, a rogue with one brain. Um, and then it goes into the exploration deck. And now you have to make a negative test. You have to do a negative thing to explore. And then your explore just reveals a timeline stabilization. And then you fail that test and you put it into the exploration deck again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, I, think I'm gonna, I think it's gonna be in the really bad one. Pitfall! Test foot three. You to attempt to jump the gap. For each point you fail by, take one damage. Shuffle Pitfall into the exploration deck. You cannot choose this option if Pitfall was drawn from the exploration deck. Um, so this is a... Uh, grasping Hands. And, uh... I love this card because I just... Um, uh, most of the time I just pass the buck on to somebody else. When I draw this. Because I'm like, I have two foot. I'm not going to do this. Um, I do think, though... <laughs> uh, because it ends up being someone's problem eventually, uh, we do have to pitfall. So we're going to put pitfall in the bad tier. Poisonous Spores. At the end of the round, each investigator attached location who is poisoned takes two horror. Each investigator attached location who is not poisoned... But to set aside poison weakness into play in his or her threat area instead. Discard poisonous spores. So obviously this one has those situations where it can show up on a location where you cannot explore out of yet. 
like say for example heart of the elders and then it's really bad but i think even in like the situations where like the card's okay it still is like the pit below where it just changes what you have to do so poisonous spores is gonna go there for me theo 10 months at the Golden Table on an 8-month stream. Thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. You use your Prime on us. If you're watching and you've not used your Twitch Prime on anybody, consider throwing it at us. We would love to have it. I mean, we have to buy all the new Arkham stuff that's coming out. So all your money goes right into that Arkham stuff. And also to making it so I can eat and live. On that note as well, if you're watching this video on YouTube, we've there's a new feature on YouTube called the Thanks Button. Uh, where you can give us, you can tip us for the video. If you enjoyed this video and you have $2 that you want to, uh, you know, thanks us with for the, the content for this video, you can press that button. You can find it just below here on the little bar with the like buttons and all that. Consider it. No worries if you don't, though. I'm just, if I'm making you have a good time, that's, that's what I'm here for. Forlorn! Thank you so much for using your Twitch Prime on us. We really appreciate it. Welcome to the Golden Table. It's a pleasure to have you. Ants! <coughs> Test foot four. For each point you fail by, discard a random card from your hand or choose and discard a card from your play area. Whoa. This always gets Bryn, which is funny because he usually plays rogues. Oh, Philip Marlowe, thanks so much for the 590 bits. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. This is for each point you fail by. I think this card, I think this card is good enough that it's going to be in the bad tier, I think. No, what am I talking about? It's annoying but manageable. It's annoying but manageable. Ooh, we have a hype train, which makes sense. We're an hour and 41 minutes into this video. Let's, uh, let's get some hype going for, uh, uh, the rest of this. Let's keep going, because we, we still have a bunch of cycles left. We're not even done Forgotten Age. No turning back. Attach no turning back to your location or connecting location. Limit one per location. Investigators cannot leave it or enter or leave attached location. Test fist three or check your supplies. If you have if you succeed or if you have a pickaxe, discard no turning back. Any investigator or connecting location may activate this ability. This card is totally manageable. If you don't have someone with good fist, just get the freaking pickaxe. Solved. Thank you for the content. Thank you for watching the content and enjoying the content. Yithian Presence. Put Yithian Presence into play in your threat area. If there's a Yithian enemy at your location, you cannot investigate that location or trigger action abilities on encounter cards, including this card. <laughs> they See, they can do reminder text. They should do reminder text more. Action. Choose and discard two cards from your hand. Discard Yithian Presence. So this one hits a bit different because in uh, in the city of archives, hands cards in your hand are so important. Um, but you cannot investigate or trigger action abilities on encounter cards. I think this card is just annoying but manageable. Oopsie. Walker of Tales, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the goddamn table. It's a pleasure to have you. All right. Cruel interrogations. Put cruel interrogations into play in your threat area. If an investigator has interviewed a subject, take one horror and cruel inter interrogations can surge. You cannot take draw actions. Test brain two. If you succeed, discard cruel interrogations. This card's bad. This card is baseline bad. I don't think it gets up to the really bad tier because everyone's brain is equal in this scenario. But I do think that this card is bad. It doesn't sound like it's bad. Um, but it is. And you're probably going to have already interrogated the subject by now. I think this card's a bad card. Lost Humanity. Test Brain 5. For each point you fail by, remove the top card of your deck from the game. If there are fewer than 10 total cards in your hand, deck, and discard pile, you are driven insane. Alright, let's just be honest. That text on it is a lot scarier than it sounds. Um, I do think that this one, while it's not 
on the level of Visions of Future Past, it is pretty close. And I think it's just going to live in the... Um, completely manageable zone. I don't think it's a free Mythos card because, like, there is the fear of this one. But I think it's ultimately still just fine. I have never seen someone get even close, close to Driven Insane by this card. It also can eat your Mystics. So your, your weaknesses, not your mystics. I mean, it can eat your mystics, too. It can eat anything. But it, it can eat your weaknesses, which is kind of sick. Captive Mind. Test Brain Zero. Regardless of whether the skill test succeeds or fails, choose and discard all but X cards from your hand where X is your modified skill value for this test. Don't mind me. Just putting this right to the top. This card can cause you to lose the scenario. And um, that is why this card is really bad. This card is a nightmare. When you get to the latter bits of this scenario, you're very much like, all right, I just have to dodge the one that makes me discard my hand. And if I do that, we're probably going to be okay. Otherwise, we're going to die. Yeah, that's bad. Put Children of Illusion into play next to the agenda deck. Each serpent enemy gets plus one fight and plus one evade. At the end of the round, discard one copy of Children of Illusion from play. Um, uh, I think it's just like completely manageable. If your goon can't solve this problem, there might be a problem with your goon. Lightless Shadow, test foot one. This test gets plus X difficulty where X is the current depth level. If you fail, take two damage. Yeah, this one can live in the, um, this, this, uh, this tier, that this is bad. It's basically just, a uh, raw uh, grasping hands, but just a little bit different. Uh, same card. <laughs> Look at that. Corporate wants you to tell the difference between these two pictures. Pam Beasley. They're the same picture. Serpent's Ire. If there are no Serpent enemies in Pursuit, Serpent's Ire gains Surge. Otherwise, find the Serpent enemy in Pursuit with the highest fight value and spawn it engaged with you. If an enemy is spawned by this effect, test Foot X, where X is that enemy's fight value. If you fail, that enemy immediately attacks you. That's not great. Highest fight value. There's that's that's a tough card. I think this one is good enough that it can live in the this is bad tier, I think. I think it's bad enough that this can be good because I I think so. I think so. I just I'm trusting my gut on this one. Shattered Ages, Test Brain 4. If you fail, place one clue on each location other than Nexus and Nakai. Oh man, fuck this card. Fuck this card. Do we fuck this? Is this is this my emotion speaking? Is this card actually that bad? Or is it just like a tempo loss? Is this just, is this, Chad, is this just my emotions leaking here? Am I speaking not from my brain, but from my, my heart? I don't know. I don't know about this one. Because this is what my gut says. But like, does this actually matter? Yeah, I think the tie thing, I'm going to trust my gut. Between Worlds. Oh yeah, this fucking thing. Put Between Worlds into play as another world location with three shroud and one clue and move to it. Uh, it is connected to the Nexus of Nakai. If drawn from the exploration deck, the exploration is still considered unsuccessful. 
At the end of the round, each investigator here takes one damage and one horror. If there are no investigators at this location, discard it and move each enemy here to Nexus of Nakai. Um, I think it's just annoying but manageable, right? Yeah, I think this card's always just annoying, but I think it's very manageable. Okay. Racked by time. I'll tell you what, this guy's not having a good day. Test brain three. Each investigator's shadow location must also perform the skill test. Each investigator fails takes two damage. Each asset assigned damage with this effect that is not defeated is shuffled into its owner's deck. Oh my god. This is this is baseline bad. Is this an oh god, this is really bad? It might be. I'm going to leave it in the this is bad, but I'm going to give this card the moment of respect it deserves. I think that this card has the potential to be really bad. Creeping Darkness. Attach Creeping Darkness to Nexus of the Kai. Place one Doom on Creeping Darkness. Formless Spawn gets plus one player health. Uh, double action. Test Brain 3 or check your supplies. If you succeed, if you or if you have torches, discard Creeping Shadows. Uh... Am I crazy, or is there an uh, error in this card? Creeping Darkness, Creeping Darkness, Creeping Shadows. Is there an errata on that one? I can't press space. Whatever I do, I cannot press the space bar. Whoa, I can't believe I've never noticed that before. Um, I think, though, that this is just... Yeah, a top review is funny. I think this one's kind of just not too bad. I think it's just not too bad. Oh my god! We are into the circle undone, which means I'm going to take a tiny little... I mean, YouTube, I'm going to pause the video. It's going to be a second for you. All right, Watcher's Grasp. Heal three damage from the Spectral Watcher. Ready the Spectral Watcher. It moves, engages, and attacks as if it was the enemy phase. Throughout the resolution of this effect, the Spectral Watcher gains prey. You. This is when, uh... This is when they forgot how the enemy phase... <laughs> the enemy's exhausted during the enemy phase. Uh... -huh. We're gonna just move this into, I think that, I think this card is bad. Mostly just because of the, uh, the three healing can be really bad. So much to the point where, like, if you haven't seen these, you're like, I guess I'm not gonna try to kill the Watcher this turn because he could just heal and remove all of our progress. He attacks for very little, like one and one. It's not, like, terrible. But I think there's enough there that we can noticeably call that this card is bad. Demonic Piping, Surge, Revelation. If Az the Piper of Azeroth is in play, deal one horde each investigator its location and at each connecting location. Otherwise, put Demonic Piping into play next to the agenda deck. If there are three copies of Demonic Piping in play, discard them and spawn the Piper of Azeroth. Engage with you. Engage with its prey, sorry. From any out of play area. Hmm. Oh. Green Apple Bubbly, sponsor me. Can you imagine? They would never. I say fuck too much. All right, um, this card is obviously bad, right? Um, the doom that it presents is pretty spooky. And odds are, unless you have a way to deal with it, uh, he is going to show up. So I think this can live in the this is bad tier. I think we're going to see a lot of these three cards, because if you tech against it, <clears throat> it goes again once again with that theory I was covering at the start of this video. Diabolical Voices. Test bring three. For each point you fail by, discard one random card from your hand. For each card you cannot discard, take one horror or one damage. This test gets plus one difficulty for each copy of Diabolical Voices in the encounter discard pile. 
I believe there are three copies of this card, so this can make you discard um, five cards or take one damage or one horror for each card you cannot. I think this one also... <clears throat> I think this one... Ugh... It's in here or bad. <clears throat> Can I really put the first, like, three Circle Undone cards all in the bad? Oh, I have a Philip Marlowe sponsor? Yes! Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, and thank you for the 500 bits. That's going to buy me a can of bubbly. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to put this in the This Is Bad tier, though. Discarding two cards is okay. Discarding your whole hand of five cards, that's a not great time. I might be a little bit painted by this from uh, Bryn and I's current run uh, on the Patreon through this. Uh, spoilers to come. It has its ups and it has its downs. But I think, I think I'm going to put this in the bad card. I mean, the hardest part of Circle Undone is the Mythos deck. It's really tough. Racked. Put Racked into play in your threat area. You get minus one to each your skills during the first skill test you perform each round. Test brain three. This has a lot of these are going to have these where if uh, you discard it or if there's an autom uh, exhausted witch, you automatically discard it. Um, <clears throat> I think this one's not too bad. It's fine. Like, where's Cursed Luck? It's basically like a worse Cursed Luck, right? So I think that I'm going to put it down here. It's just your first test each round. And like, your t skill values are going to be so high. And like, it can get you in the mythos phase, but overall I think the card's just not too bad. Put Bedevil into play in your threat area. You cannot trigger action abilities on cards you control. If you're the fighter, this card's bad. If you're a fighter with low brain, this card's a nightmare. Um, but I think... If you're a seeker and you're, like, just investigating, like, who cares? Um, but I do think it's going to live in the this is annoying but manageable tier. I think that's where this card can live. Mysteries of the Lodge. Place one Doom on the nearest cultist enemy and then until the end of the round increase the difficulty to fight, evade, or parlay with that enemy by two. If no Doom is placed by this effect, Mysteries of the Lodge gains Surge. Uh, I think this card's annoying but manageable as well. It can really just throw a wrench in your plans, but it doesn't actually like actively hurt you too much, but it can cause you the agenda to advance earlier than you'd expect, just because they become a little bit trickier to parlay with as well. Evil Pass. Put Evil Pass, pass into play in your threat area. If there's no copy of it in your threat area, uh, when the encounter deck runs out, take two horror and test brain three. If you succeed, discard Evil Pass. So realistically, this is gonna deal you two horror. It could, if you're playing in four players, deal you four. In three, it has a chance. But in two and one, realistically, this is just going to deal you two horror. Of note, you cannot get rid of it <clears throat> um, without... Uh, it's not like a Frozen in Fear where you can just test it at the end of your turn. It's not like a Bedeviled or a Racked where you can test it when you want to test it. This card exists until the encounter deck runs out and then it can flip over. And then you, sorry, you can get rid of it. It doesn't flip over. Um, I do think that it's annoying but manageable because you basically can have a countdown to when the Doom's going to trigger. I don't think it's bad. Yeah, I think it's just annoying. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, when I draw Evil Past, I'm not like, this is terrible, I'm going to die. It's like, alright, I can foresee when this Doom's going to be getting to me. Sorry, this horror is going to be getting to me. You can tell when I'm a. Uh, you can tell that we're two hours into this because I'm starting to mix up my words. We're going though. We're going. Centuries of Secrets. Test brain five. For each point you fail by, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If a cursed treachery is discarded by this effect, deal one direct damage to your investigator and to each of your ally assets. Uh, I think this also is going to live in the annoying but manageable. 
You're always going to hit a curse. You're always going to hit a curse on this. So just expect this card to also deal damage. But it's not like bad like these ones. If you pass, it's like, oh baby, if you fail by one, you might not hit a curse, right? Which goes against what I just said, how you'll always hit a curse. But you guys know what I mean, hopefully, hopefully. Whispers in the Dark. Each location gains take one horror when the round ends. Discard Whispers in the Dark. Uh, also annoying. Man, there's some... Uh, Circle Undone is trending really high. Circle Undone is trending really high so far. Uh, memory Issues and also uh, Haunted is a great mechanic. I want them to bring it back. Um, and then in combination with some of the other cards that we're going to see, this card can do a lot of... A lot of juicy goodness. Trap Spirits. Test uh, foot three. For each point you fail by, take one damage. If your creation is haunted, as additional cost for the investigator to commit one or more cards to a skill test, he or she must resolve each haunted ability on this location. Oh my god. Oh my god. So I don't think it's out in the top tier. It's definitely high in the this is bad tier. Um, uh, but it is just a, a grasping hands. Realm of Torment, the Brin Special. When your turn begins, resolve each haunted ability in your location. When your turn ends, test Brain 3. If you succeed, discard it. Um, honestly, I'm going to give this card the respect it deserves. I think this is on the same level of Frozen and Fear. For rogues, and if you're not a rogue, you still have to suffer a haunted effect. And sometimes those haunted effects can be annoying. If you don't get rid of this when your turn ends, it becomes really bad. Like, Brynn's used to living with Realm of Torment, but I don't think uh, it's fun. I don't think that's a fun life for him to have gotten used to. Shapes in the Mist. Surge. Resolve each haunted ability on your location. And then something else. Wow. Man. And then it still becomes another encounter card. I don't even think that this is like okay. I think that's just bad still. I think this is also still just bad. I don't even think this is annoying. I think it's just like rough. Like yes, sometimes your haunted a uh, haunted things are going to be really minor. Yes. But it still then surges into something else. It basically is just adding text onto your next mythos card that says do like take one horror, right? Wow. Circle Undone has some hard treacheries. Terror of the Night! Test Brain 4. If you fail, put Terror of the Night into play next to the agenda deck. If you fail by three or more, Terror of the Night gains Surge. If there are three copies, discard them, and each investigator takes three horror. Yo, this is really bad. <laughs> this is really bad. This has killed me more like than I want to admit. This has killed me more than I want to admit. Yes, you solve one of them. The problem is solved, right? But this goes with my Ward of Protection thing, that if I'm going to Ward of Protection, this is a Mystic just to get rid of it. It deserves the respect, and oh god, this card is really bad. It's really scary. Fate of All Fools. Um, so if, if you're the first one to draw it, you put it in the play in your threat area, and then from then on you either place a Doom on another copy, or the player with it takes two direct damage. Oh, excuse me. The bubbly's coming up. Um, oh, look at this. We're getting to the bottom. Only have to scroll through like 100 rows, but we're getting there. I think Fate of All Fools is annoying but manageable. Um, I, have been, uh, I have been the fool like pretty much every time, every scenario it's shown up when Brynn and I have been playing, and I think it's still just kind of okay. I love the design on the card. I think it's really cool. Um, and I think they knocked it out of the park with that one. <clears throat> Curse you, Brown Jenkin! Alright. If Brown Jenkin is not in play, search the encounter deck and discard pile for him. Spawn him at your location and take one damage. Otherwise, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a swarm of rats. Spawn and engage with you, then take one damage. I think this whole thing is annoying, but manageable. They actually have a really good... 
their, their treachery design is really good. And seeing it all like this is really making me respect the treachery design a lot more than I was before. The, uh, this would be a lot less annoying. It would be okay if it didn't also deal one damage. But because it deals one damage, it becomes very annoying. Hey, it's the Nahab version. If Nahab is in play, ready her, resolve her hunter keyword, and she attacks each investigator her location. If Nahab is at the site of the sacrifice, place one doom on her as well. Otherwise, searching counter deck and scrub pile for Nahab and spawn her in your location. This one's bad. This one's more than annoying. This one is actively bad. It's a bad time. It's a bad time. Extra dimensional visions. Test brain two. This test gets plus one difficulty for every 10 cards the encounter discard pile. If you fail, discard an asset you control. Um, where's my, where's my crypt chill? This is annoying but manageable. The same tier as that one. Same kind of effect there. Put pulled by the stars into playing your threat area. At the end of your turn, if you do not move... Sorry, one second. For every 10 cards you encounter discard pile, if you fail, discard an asset you control. Yeah, same thing. Put pulled by the stars into playing your threat area. At the end of your turn, if you do not move at least once during your turn, take two horror. Test brain three. If you succeed, discard pulled by the stars in, from play. If it is an exhausted witch, you can automatically succeed. Um, this card is annoying but manageable, but it also is bad. Because it's kind of like a Frozen in Fear, right? Like, it basically eats an action. And if you don't, you take two horror. Anyone can get rid of it, though, so we will put it up into the Annoying but Manageable tier. Disquieting Dreams. Test Spring 5. If you fail, put Disquieting Dreams into play in your threat area. At the end of your turn, discard the top card of the encounter deck. When the encounter deck runs out, discard Disquieting Dreams reveal the top ten cards of your deck. Draw each weakness revealed and discard each other revealed card. This card, like, does nothing. Man, finally, I didn't even draw a Mythos card. Like, this card just bumps up, buffs up other encounter cards, admittedly, yes. But it also just, basically just reads Draw a Weakness after a lot of turns. So I think it's just, that's our first, that's our first card in uh, Circle Undone where it's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> that, that don't come from the core sets. Punishment. Put into play in your threat area. If an enemy or at any location is defeated, take one damage. It has the witch thing on it. That's annoying. That's annoying but manageable, I think, as well. There's going to be a lot of these. Any Anything that just sits in your threat area, there's a lot of memory issues that come with them too. And as you know, I hate the memory issue part of this. Oh, it's just a... Just adds a little bit of extra annoyance onto it all. Burdens of the past. Number one, super sick art. Number two, if there are no copies in your threat area, it gains Surge. Otherwise, trigger the Force ability... Of each copy of unfinished business in your threat areas if it were the end of combat. Okay, end of the round, sorry. Um <clears throat> This card's gonna surge like 95% of the time. So I'm gonna put this in the completely manageable part, because it basically just does nothing. When it does trigger the effect can be spooky, but I think overall it's still just gonna be fine. Yeah. Ominous portents. Peril. You must choose one. Draw the top card of the Spectral Encounter deck. This card gains Peril and its effects cannot be cancelled. Test. Brain three. If you fail, take two horror. Huh. This one's a very hard card to determine where it sits. Because if you have the brain test, if you have the brain to do the test, you're going to do the test. If you don't have the brain, you're going to draw another card. There are some spooky stuff in the Spectral deck. But I think that this one, honestly, because like it works in your favor no matter what, 
you can just... This one's not too bad. Because if you're scared of the Spectral deck, just do the Brain Test. Even if your brain's not great, it's worth it, right? Because then you know what the downside is. But if you look at this and you think, I would rather take anything than two horror, even if that is horror, do the other one. Yeah. Gravelight. All right, Gravelight sucks. <laughs> um, so if you draw from the standard encounter deck, shuffle into the spectral encounter deck. If you draw from the spectral encounter deck, take two damage and place it in the standard encounter pile. If you also draw from the standard deck, it does gain surge. I like this, the design on this card because it like gives you a hint of what's to come which is really cool, which is really cool. Oh my God, I can see Dream Eaters already. We're, we're blazing. We're actually actively killing it. This is incredible. Oh my God. Then after Dream Eaters, oh, there's a lot of Dream Eaters. We have Carcosa, this is, a, this is incredible. All right. Uh, I think Gravelight though is um, two Tesla's damage. I think it can live in the this is bad tier. Bane of the Living. Peril. You must choose one. Choose an unfinished business card in play. Flip it to its heretic side and place damage on it equal to half its health. Discard cards on the top of the spectral encounter deck until a geist enemy is discarded and spawn that enemy engage with you. That's pretty minor. You're just going to get a ghost. Like, that one's, honestly, that one seems not too bad. If I draw this, I just say, give me a ghost. Give me a ghost and you, my goon, kill it. Or I will kill it as the goon. Even then, in two players, half of its health is three damage on the Heretic. Like, that's just, you can just kill that thing again, right? It's pretty minor. That card's, that card's not too bad. Call to order. Place the two Tomos cultist enemies in the encounter discard pile and spawn them in the empty locations with their most remaining clues. If no cultist enemies are spawned by this effect, uh, it gains Surge. Uh, I think this card's annoying but manageable. It's not on like the not too bad, I think, because two enemies is a lot for one card, but uh, it still is just kind of just fine. But it's not bad. But like two enemies, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's down here on the not too bad, but. If there are no cultist enemies in play, expulsion gains surge. Otherwise, the nearest cultist enemy readies moves uh, one location at a time until it reaches your location, engages you, and makes an immediate attack. Then place each key you control on that enemy. On the flip side, I think this one is not too bad. The cultists, sorry, the, yeah, the cultists in that scenario are pretty uh, weak. And I think it's very easy to solve that problem. And even in them taking their key, just kill them. <laughs> just shoot them with a gun and the key's yours again. Congratulations. If you control at least one key beneath the lodge gains peril, and its skill test gets plus one difficulty. Test book three. For each point you fail by, you must either lose one clue or take one horror. Whoa. Wow. That's bad. That's a, that's a, this is a bad card. That card, that, that card actually hits pretty hard. We are not a fan of that one. That one is a no thank you, but, um... Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. It gains peril if you have a key as well. Interesting. Mark of the order. Surge. Check which investigator controls each key. The investigator with the skull key takes one damage. The uh, cultist key takes one horror. The tablet key discards two cards that ran from their hand. And the squid key loses three resources. So slight spoilers for Bryn and I's same color challenge run on the Patreon for all of our patrons who can watch it. But Bryn might have had 75% uh, of the keys. And then he drew this card. And then it has Surge. <laughs> so I think this card is a lot weaker if you can divvy out the keys to other players. This is especially true in four player. And if each player can take a key, this is a pretty minor effect. But... In two players, and three players, and four players, and one player, if you're holding all the keys, that's a lot of, that's a lot of problems, and then it surges into other things as well. I think, 
I think I'm going to put this card in the this is bad level. Because in the scenario, this can put a lot of pressure on an investigator. And I think that's should be respected. Eager for death, we've seen these ones. These are already gone. Death approaches. This is like this, um, the Psycho Pomp song where they take additional horror. And like the other one, I'm just throwing this right up into the top. Because Psycho Pomp song is really bad, Death Approaches is also really bad. If you get both of them and then you take a damage and a horror, you're like, I am gonna die. <laughs> this is it for me, I'm dead. Marked for death, all right. Test foot two, increase the skill test difficulty by one for each horror on you. If you fail, take two damage. Uh, we'll respect these cards. We'll leave them in the, this is bad tier. Each investigator test frame five. Each investigator fails must resolve either the haunted ability on his or location or the haunted ability on the spectral watcher's location. Um, this card's also bad. This card's also bad. Basically, this just says, hey, everyone, this is your, let's hold hands. This is our encounter card. We're going to suffer together. And you might get okay haunted abilities, but a lot of the haunted abilities in that scenario deal you damage. Some of them are, are fine, like lose resources, like that's okay. But a lot of them are also just like uh, get hit over the head with a hammer, you nerd. Chaos Manifest. Test Brain 3. Place one breach on X different random locations where X is the amount you failed by. All right, so uh, in the Clutches of Chaos does need to be treated a little bit differently in its design for how we approach these, but I think this is annoying but manageable. It doesn't outright kill you, but it does hinder your progress or has the potential to be really bad. So I think it's just this is annoying but manageable. Primordial Gateway. Attached to a random location, place breaches on attached location until there are exactly three breaches on it. Treat the attached location as if its printed text box were blank. Test Brain or Book 4 to close the gateway. If you succeed, discard it. This card is bad. This card is actively bad in that scenario. When this shows up, it's never a good time. It might even be a really bad card, but it's still manageable a lot more than what these ones are, or doesn't pack as big of a punch, but I do think it is a very bad card. If there are no breaches on your location, place one breach on your location. You must take X damage or horror divided as you wish. X is the total amount of doom and breaches on your location. Ah, oh, that's rough. That's rough. I think this is worth the bad. I think this is also worth a bad one as well. It's a tough card. It's a tough card for sure. Secrets from Beyond. Secrets of the Beyond. Find the call to send me in play with the most doom on it. For each doom on that enemy, place one breach on the enemy's location. If no breaches are placed by this effect, Secrets of the Beyond gains surge. I think that's annoying but manageable because this will probably realistically place one breach. Yeah, I think it'll realistically place one breach. Toil and Trouble. Hey, that's the that's the art of the box. Peril. You must either choose one. Resolve the Revelation ability on the topmost power treachery in the discard pile. Resolve an incursion at your location. Wow. You have a choice. Realistically, this is probably annoying but manageable. Because just choose, take the power treachery. The power treachery could lead to a primordial gateway. It could also lead to a chaos manifest. Hmm. It could also lead to maybe some other powers that exist in the deck. But I think it's more annoying than it is manageable. Because it at least makes you feel like you've made the right choice. <laughs> so it's more annoying and manageable than this is outright bad. Because as I said... 
Maybe you're in a situation where you can actually just do the incursion, right? And that's what makes it less just outright bad. You actually notice that. Like, anything that usually has a choice usually goes down one whole tier. Like as I said, it's very interesting to see this, but I think they're very good at designing treachery cards. Ultimate Chaos. Test Brain 4. If you fail, attach Ultimate Chaos to Azathoth. If you fail by two or more, take one damage and one horror. If you fail by three or more, Ultimate Chaos Gain Surge cannot be cancelled. If there are three copies of Ultimate Chaos attached to Azathoth, discard them and either place one Doom on Azathoth, or he attacks each Investigator in player order. Oh my... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This card's just awful. This card's a nightmare. So that cannot be canceled. Does that imply that 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 goes to the entire yeah, that goes to the entire revelation effect. Wow. That card's a fucking house. Whispering Bargain. Peril. You must either choose one. Place one Doom on Azathoth or he attacks you. Um, this one's also just uh, really bad. This one's also really bad. It's just a really bad time. Azathoth's like, hey, do you want to look at my coin? And he has, like, the extra thumb. And he's like, hey, do you like this coin? And then we're like, no, Azathoth, stop, stop. And he's like, look at my coin, nerd. Right? Can be ignored, though. Yeah. Uh, the end is nigh. Test brain one. This test gets plus X difficulty where X is the current agenda number. If there is no agenda play, X is four. If you fail, move each doom on each cultist enemy played at Azathoth. This is also this is this is not like really bad. It's just bad though. It's bad. That's a tough scenario. A world in darkness. Amen, brother. If there is no Doom on Azathoth, the World of Darkness gains Surge. Otherwise, for each Doom on Azathoth, you must choose one. Holy crap! No wonder this scenario is so hard. Not to mention, when you freaking advance the act, you have to draw an encounter card or something like that. This is bad. That's bad. Wow, Circle Undone has a freaking hard, has a hard Mythos deck. Wow. All right, we're on to Dream Eaters. Surge. Each investigator in Channel Woods location tests brain three. Each investigator who fails must lose an action and take one horror. Um that is Surge. Oh! Each investigator who fails must lose one action and take one horror. Yeah, that's annoying, but manageable. It's fine. It's pretty fine. The only reason why it's annoying is that it hurts everybody. At an Enchanted Woods location, which is going to be most people, right? Don't stray from the path, nerds. <laughs> Never stray from the path. Always stray from the path. Outbreak. Perform an infestation test. If you have an infected location, treat each, each tablet as a skull. Ultimately, this is also just annoying but manageable. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You want to... If you draw... If you draw a tablet on this, like, that's bad because then you lose a thing in the future. Like, a tablet in the future, which makes it a lot easier. Um, but... It's still just fine. It's still just fine. 
Will of the Spider Mother. Test Brain 3. If there's a spider enemy at your location, you cannot commit cards to the skill test. If you fail, you cannot attack or investigate until the end of the round. That's annoying, but probably still fine, right? On the fighter, it's a this is bad. But realistically, as the fighter, you, you want all spiders to be dead by the time you draw this card. I think that overall, this one's still just annoying, but fine. Uh, um, so these Law of Yggdrasil, all of them. <laughs> well, that's fun, isn't it? Oh, sorry, one second. Just... Oh, yeah. Okay, one second. We're going to do something quickly. Gonna turn it nice and low though. No, give me like a, I need some. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. This guy's having the party of his lifetime. Oh my god, We're, I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm in the club. Incredible. Incredible. Okay. Anyways, um, uh, these cards all live in the exact same tier, which is the annoying but manageable. They're actually like, realistically, these could all live in the this is fine, but because you constantly need to like check, uh, it's... Um, it's annoying, right? So like, it's just, they're like, realistically, these live down here with the other ones, but because there's, the laws are so finicky, flavor-wise, it's like a home run out of the park, right? But still, uh, they're, they're, they're ultimately just very manageable. All right, everyone say it with me. Foot bad. Didn't even draw a freaking Mythos card, baby. Easiest thing. And if foot is good, if foot needs to be good, just make like brain bad. <laughs> Easiest mythos card in the game. Easiest mythos card in the game for me. I love foot bad. Dreamer's Curse. Test brain five. For each point you fail by, take one damage to a maximum of three damage. For the purposes of counting icons committed to the skill test, um, book, fist, and foot icons count as mansion icons, and brain and wild count as two. Same thing over here, but for uh, damage and horror. So... <sighs> I think that these ones don't live for me they're softer than these other ones but they can be bad Just making foot bad while Super Fang needs to use lockpicks will never not be a good time. If Super Picks, uh, sorry, if Super Fang needs lockpicks to break down the door, he can do it with foot bad. I believe in him. I believe in him. Um, okay. These ones are tough because, like, they're bad. But they're not, like, too bad. They're very manageable. I feel like you pass these ones a lot more than you pass others. But I think we just gotta, once again, respect the text on the card, right? No, I think I think they're just more annoying. They're annoying because they're gonna eat a lot of your cards, but I think they're very passable. I think they're very passable. Yeah. Deeper Slumber. Put Deeper Slumber to play in your threat area. Your maximum hand size is reduced by three and checked after every time you draw one or more cards. This card right here, yo, that's completely manageable. Uh, that's completely manageable right there. It's annoying in Patrice, but in Patrice, just freaking take the double action, yo. Just do it. Make it a priority. Make sure someone does it as Patrice. That's just all you got to do, and then the problem's solved. Dreamland's Eclipse. 
Put your lands and clips in play in the next to the agenda deck. When you initiate an investigation, you must either take one horror or your location gets plus two shroud to this investigation. At the end of the round, discard Dreamlands Eclipse. Uh, so this one's very annoying. If you're if you don't if you put it in play next to the agenda deck, you're gonna be forget forget about it. This one, like the best thing to do with this card is give it to your Cluver. Give it to your Cluver and say, This is your baby. You have to wash this. Um I think that overall, though, this card is also just completely manageable. I think it's very manageable. Prismatic Phenomenon. Put into play in your threat area the first time you perform one of the following actions. Draw a resource or play each round. It takes an additional action. After you successfully investigate a location, instead of discovering clues, discard it. I think that this card's not too bad. On your fighter, it can be kind of annoying because, like, how do you get it off, right? Um, but the reactions on it, like, the real one that matters is the play. Otherwise, um, the draw and resource, like, you'll be okay. You'll be okay if those take two. Just don't do them, right? Um, on, I was about to say, on Nathaniel Cho, it can get really bad, right? Um, but then use your glories. Use your glories to, like, commit, have your seeker get the clue, help you, like, they can help you with it. I think it's still just, like, not too bad. I think it's still just, like, fine. Night Terrors. Uh, after you fail a skill test, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Draw each weakness, reveal this way, and remove the other cards from the game. If Night Terror is in your threat area, test brain four. After this test ends, discard Night Terrors, even if you fail. Honestly, this card is, like, completely manageable. It's just an action. It just eats an action. That's all it does. Glimpse of the Underworld. Put Glimpse of the Underworld into play in your threat area. When you take damage under horror, take one additional damage or horror. Discard Glimpse of the Underworld, then take one damage and horror. Um, I think this card's just a little bit annoying, but very manageable, just because it basically just deals you one and one. And, like, that's annoying, but it's it doesn't cost an action. It just zip, right? Like, and then it's gone. Oh, man, that's good, Bubbly. I love this card. I love this card in our, uh, in our patron run of Dream Eaters because it always gets on Sister Mary's Spear. Attach the non-permanent non-weakness asset you control with the highest printed cost, otherwise it gains Surge. Treat attached asset as if its printed text box were blank. Uh, as an action you can discard an asset you control, discard Threads of Reality. I think that like this card is annoying, but it's also still very manageable. It fits with the other asset discarding effects here. All right. Sickening webs. Attached to your location. Each spider enemy attached location gains retaliate and alert. That sucks. Investigators cannot move out of attached location. That sucks. Test fist or foot three. If you succeed, discard it. Um, I have seen this one actually... Oh my god, look at how... Sh We're almost there! I have seen this one do a lot of damage. So I'm going to put this one in the this is bad tier. Like, I think its effects are ultimately very mild, like, if you don't have any spiders enemies, but you're probably going to have spider enemies, and then they make it a lot trickier. So I think I'm just going to give this card the respect it deserves, and I think it's the first one within um, within Dream, uh, Dream Eaters that I think deserves to be in the bad tier. Hunted by Corsairs. When the act advances, each investigator takes two damage. Test book four, or foot four. If you succeed, discard it. Man, we're really picking up the speed because a lot of these, like, we're in the thing where it's all just kind of like, we've already talked about the concept of this card in this video. Uh, it's just a minor slowdown. You basically just have to spend an action to get rid of it. It's annoying, but it's manageable. Sometimes you'll be like, we're going to advance the act, and then someone says, uh, actually, we have these hunted by Corsairs, and that's where the annoying comes from. And you're like, oh, these damn... Oh, the, 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 these things, these pirates, the space pirates, I hate them. Zug Burrow. Test foot three. For each point you fail by, add one swarm card to the nearest swarming Zug enemy. 
If you fail and there are no such enemies in play, search the encounter deck and discard a pile for a Zoog enemy and draw it and shuffle the encounter deck. So, like, really, the worst thing that did this does is adds, like, just some more damage that your fighter needs to do on the Zooks. This might be controversial, but I think this one's not too bad. I think it's fine. This card doesn't scare me. The Zooks don't scare me. Dreamy... Excuse me. It's all that bubbly. Uh, the Dream Eaters doesn't really scare me that much. It's kind of just, uh, kind of just an easy time. One second, I'm going to blow my nose. All right. What's next? Song of the Make America Great Again Bird. Attached to location. After you move out of an attached location, take one horror plus one doom and pl place one doom on the current agenda and discard Song of the Mega Bird. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Test brain four to resist the call or fist four to drive away the birds. If you succeed, discard it. Um, uh, I think it's just annoying, but fine. Because you can just get rid of it. I think it's, it's, an, it's very annoying. It's on the higher tiers of annoying for sure. Um, but I think it's very manageable. Someone in your group should be able to do this brain test or this fist test. I think it's just annoying. Yeah, nothing too, uh... Nothing, it's, it's not in this tier, I think. But it definitely, yeah, me as well, Tasty Toast, it definitely annoys the hell out of me. Wondrous Lands. If there are no clues on your location, discard Wondrous Lands and it gains Surge. Otherwise, attached Wondrous Lands to your location. Attached location gets minus two Shroud. After you successfully investigate attached location, take one Horror, place one Doom on the current agenda, and discard Wondrous Lands. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Uh, this card's uh, annoying. It's manageable, but it also feels worse. Hmm. Um. I think it's annoying, but manageable. I don't think it's bad. I think it's I think it's just annoying. It feels worse than it does in Search for Gadath, but I still think it's ultimately just kind of okay. It's just kind of fine. Move each investigator, an enemy at the topmost location to the location below it. Flip the topmost location to its unrevealed side, discard all tokens and attachments from it, and place it below the bottommost location. Shuffle the positions of each unrevealed location so you cannot tell which is which. Add this card to the victory display. Um, the the latter half, like the the second half of a thousand shapes of horror, is is not fun and i'll be honest the first half ain't great either it's kind of just plain it's kind of like to me a thousand shapes of horror is the uh echoes of the past of dream eaters it just kind of feels like a little bit boring because it's kind of like it plays out the exact same way every time that's actually probably the biggest issue I have with Dream Eaters is that it, it feels very samey. Because, like, there's not much variation and uh, fingers crossed that the return to actually does come out, even though I've given up hope. Um, I think this card's bad, though. This is bad. It's a bad card. This is bad. It's not great. I wish it wasn't in the scenario. Maybe it deserves to be really bad. I'll put 
it in the really bad. I think it does deserve it. It really, it really hurts the second half of that scenario. Uh, indescribable apparition. Uh, putting a threat area, you get minus one teacher skills while the unnameable is at your location. Discard it. Oh my god, this is completely manageable. Just get rid of it. <laughs> Just double action, get rid of it. Glowing eyes. Put glowing eyes into your threat area. At the end of the round, take one horror for each card in your threat area to a maximum of one horror. Discard glowing eyes. Um, this card actually has the potential to be real to be bad. But it also has the potential to be annoying but manageable. It also has the potential to be not too bad. It really depends on the number of uh, horror, how much horror you take. So we're going to put it right in the middle, I think. We're going to put it right in the middle. Because, like, most of the time, this should just deal you one horror, and then you're like, and you keep going, right? But uh, sometimes it, it'll do a lot of damage to you. After another card enters the threat area, choose and discard one card from your hand. Test brain three. If you succeed, discard it. This also is just completely manageable. Sometimes you can be like, I'm just going to discard cards. Sometimes you'll be like, hey, I'm going to do the brain test. Sometimes you're going to be like, hey, can you do the brain test? But either way, it's a very manageable card. Secrets in the attic. Test brain three. If you fail, take one horror and put secrets in the attic to play next to the agenda deck. Lightning Bolt abilities on locations cannot be triggered. At the end of the round, discard one copy of Secrets in the Attic from play. Annoying, but very manageable. Wow, I'm loving the pace we're getting with this. This is incredible. Close Watch. Test Fist Foot 4. If you fail, you must either discard an Nasty Control with the highest printed cost, or raise your alarm level by 1. Alright, I'm going to take a second and not let the recent Patron Game Day taint my mind on this card. Because when we um, did this on the Patron Game Day last week, it might have gotten a bit out of hand. <laughs> it might have gotten a little bit unbearable. But I think overall... This card still just lives in the this is annoying, but fine. Uh, I think it went very well. Am I, am I misremembering? I think I can no longer trust you when you said a scenario went well. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm, I can no longer trust you about. All right, forced into hiding. Uh, test X, where X is your alarm level. If you fail, lose one action. If you fail by three or more, lose two actions instead. If you fail by five or more, lose three actions instead. Um, this one's probably... So this one actually scales beautifully with the scenario, right? Like, it snails... It snails... It scales really nicely with the scenario. Um, I think that it's... I think it's still annoying, but fine. Like, losing one action never feels great. Losing two actions is where it becomes bad. And losing your whole turn is like... Ah! Right? Like, it feels the worst of them all. Lunar Patrol. Attach your location. Test foot three to lose this patrol. If you succeed, discard it. When an investigator leaves, attach your location. Raise the investigator's alarm level. Yo! Annoying, but manageable. Has an easy way out, but it's going to bother you a lot more than you think it will. Taste of lifeblood. Test brain three. For each point you fail by, you must choose one. Place one in clues on your location. Place one in clues on the nearest enemy or take one damage. Wow. A lot of options. And I think the options keep it out of the bad tier. I think it just leaves it in the most populous tier we have, which is annoying but manageable. Lit by Deathfire. Oh my god, these are so metal. These two card names and art. Each investigator loses one resource. Each investigator of Veil or Depth's location chooses to discard one card from their hand. Each investigator at a depth location loses one action. So, 
Baseline, super manageable. Lose one resource. If this, like, this is drawn early. This is drawn late. It, it really puts some pressure on it. So I think it deserves to live in this as annoying, but manageable tier. Just because of that late game scaling is really nice. Unexpected ambush. If there are no enemies in play, take one damage and one horror. Otherwise, test a book or foot four. If you fail, the nearest enemy readies, moves one location at a time until it reaches the location and engages you. Then if you fail by three or more, it makes an immediate attack. Yeah, I think it just lives with its friends in the this is annoying but manageable tier. Dole Tunnel. If Dole Tunnel uh, slowly doles in play, it moves and attacks if it was the enemy phase. Otherwise, attach Dole Tunnel to a location at least two locations away from the nearest Dole Tunnel. Uh, then if Slytherin doles in the victory display, spawn and attach to the location exhausted. So the spawning is annoying, right? However, um, I do think that overall this card is just not too bad. I think this one misses a lot more than it hits. In my mind. Shadow of Atanaka. Test Brain 2. This test gets plus one difficulty for each damage on the scenario reference card. If you fail, take one damage and one horror. Alright, I'm going to put a little bit of... That shows up in the... It's a weird set symbol to have here. I think that this one... Oh yeah, so this is yeah, when you're you're in the depths in point of no return. I think realistically though, even though it goes against some of the other rankings, I think this card's also just not too bad. Taking a damage in a horror is pretty minor. The difficulty scales, but the damage doesn't, which is huge, which is absolutely huge. Uh, I have all these ones together. Uh, this one goes into the required. <laughs> required category. Myriad forms. If one or more copies of Nerathotep are in your hand, reveal them. Each one attacks you and is shelved in the encounter deck. If Nerathotep is in play, he moves and attacks and was the enemy phase. If no copies of Nerathotep attack as a result of this, it gains Surge. Uh, I think this card's just bad. It can really slow your game down. It's just bad. Like, this is bad. My Nerathotep that I'm holding is gone? No, thank you. Oh, uh, this guy's also in the frickin' club. This is what I see every night in my dreams. Go, buddy, go! Alright. That's enough of that. Alright, these things, what do they do? You cannot commit more than one card to skill test. Disc uh, test uh, book, fist, and foot three. If you fail, place one doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. You cannot commit more than one card to skill tests. It's a lightning bolt action? Oh, these are fine. These are, these are not too bad. Just hold it. Just hold it or like be like I have something to give you to somebody and then they'll think it's near Lathotep and you just give them them this. <laughs> and you're like, bye, see ya. Right, like just do that. Easy. Abandoned by the gods, test brain three. For each point you fail by, you must choose a different number between zero and four. Each player must discard each event and asset from their hand with a printed cost equal to any of the chosen numbers. I love the design on that card. Um, I think it's bad. It affects everybody. It might not hit people, but it has the potential to be really bad. So I think that it deserves, once again, the respect. The respect. You gotta give the card respect, right? 
The Spinner in the Darkness. Attach the nearest Ancient One enemy. I wonder who that could be. Each attached enemy gets plus one damage and plus one horror. Test any skill five. If you succeed, discard the Spinner in the Darkness. Am I wrong, or is this card, like, not too bad? I think it's just not too bad. It's kind of just fine. Put caught in the web into play in your threat area. You get minus one foot and cannot take more than one move action each round. Test fist three. If you succeed, discard it. Uh, this one is close to bad, but I think it's still just annoying. That could be really bad for a Kluver, though. I'll give it, you know what? In this scenario, I think it's worse than it reads. I think in this scenario, uh, Caught in a Web is harder than the card actually reads. So yeah, so in um, Weaver of Chaos or whatever the final scenario is, this effect is a lot more damaging than it seems just on paper. Endless Weaving. Choose a spider enemy in play. If it is engaged with an investigator, it makes a immediate attack along with each of its swarm and host cards. Yuck. Otherwise, place one doom on its location. Yuck. If there are no spider enemies in play, search and counter deck and discard pile for a spider enemy and draw it. That's fine. So if there's no spider enemies in play, this card is, like, not too bad. Um, but because the other two top effects are bad, um, it's... I think that this one is, and especially because I'm pretty sure the scenario where this shows up, there's like always spider enemies in play. No, maybe the legs of Ashlanaka aren't spiders. Let me just see what happens if I search leg on Arkham DB. They are spiders. Yeah, that's a rough card. That's a rough card. Uh, we're into Innsmouth. Oh my god, we're into Innsmouth. I'm going to quickly just... Uh, well, you two, I don't need to say this again. All right, Innsmouth time. Blind Sense. Test foot three. If you fail and the Amalgam is in play, it readies... Moves directly to your location, engages you, and makes an immediate attack. If it is in the depths, put in the play, engage with you, it makes an immediate attack. Um, that's tricky. This is tough. I need to remind myself of the amalgam before we get going. Remember, Justin, do not press the space bar. Fight three. De it deals one and one. So he's not too scary of an enemy. Wish the Amalgam was in more Innsmouth scenarios. Yeah, it does really feel like he should be, huh? Um, I think this card is annoying, but fine. I think it's annoying, but manageable. Yeah, I think it's like... The Amalgam's not that scary. He's just a 3-3-2, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's still just fine. From the depths. If the Amalgam is in the depths, put into play engage with you. Otherwise, place the Amalgam in the depths, and from the depths, gain Surge. So it can get rid of him, right? I think that's really cool. Engage with you, otherwise... Place it in the depths. I think that this card is not too bad. This card's just kind of fine. It's not too bad at all. Psychic Pull. If you have no cards in your hand, Psychic Pull gains Surge. Otherwise, discard one random card from your hand, then test Brain X, where X is the printed cost of the discarded card. If you fail, lose one action. Um... So this card can be bad if you get it like on the first turn, right? And you discard your beat cop that you didn't play for some reason, right? Um, but I still think this card is just not too bad. 
I think it's just not too bad at all. I think it's just totally a-okay. Me when I pull a skill with this naughty frog. Hell yeah. Amen. Amen. Deep one assault. Disengage from each deep one enemy or location. Each deep one enemy... So for people who don't know, because skills don't have a cost, like the test is just like... It's like... Undefined? Who knows? Disengage from each deep one enemy at your location. Each deep one enemy at your location, each connected location engages you. If no enemies engage you from this effect, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a deep one enemy and spawn and engage with you and shuffle the encounter deck. So there's a lot of cards in uh, Innsmouth. I think that this one is one of the uh, really scary ones. It's notably... Um, it's notably the card that I think a lot of people think of when they do this. I think that this one is the first one in Innsmouth that I'm going to say that this is bad. Sorry, the second one. We have Blind Sense up there. Good job. Oh, no, that's the annoying. The bad one. Yeah, there we go. I do think that this is one of the, the scarier cards in Innsmouth. Um, because there's a lot of scary deep ones. Namely the bull. Namely the deep one bull. I'm so excited for... It might be out by the time this video comes out. I have no idea when this video is going to fall into our schedule. But I am very excited for you all to watch Am and I's sealed play of Innsmouth. Uh, it's been very enjoyable to record so far. And I'm very excited for you all to see them. Undertow. If your location is unflooded, Undertow gains Surge. Otherwise, put into play in your threat area. After you move, take two damage and two horror and discard Undertow. Discard one card from your hand. Test Fist or Foot 3 to, to, to fight to pull the tides. If you succeed, discard it. Um, ah, this card's a bit tricky. But I think it's going to live in the annoying but manageable fear, uh, tier. I think it's just ultimately more fine then it is uh, bad. Rising Tides. Increase the flood level of the nearest location that can have its flood level increased. If no location's flood level is increased by this effect, it gains Surge. Um, I'm going to forget the time that I killed Travis with this card. <laughs> I know that... Um, I know that's a very distinct memory of mine, killing Travis with this. But I think that was more jo more so just like bad luck of the connecting location than Rising Tides. I think overall Rising Tides is still just kind of not too bad. Uh oh, you bumped in line, didn't you, brother? You should probably be somewhere down over there. All right, Riptide. If your location is unflooded, uh, Riptide gains surge. Otherwise, test foot three, four if your location is fully flooded. If you fail, choose and discard an nasty control. If you cannot lose one resource for each point you fail by instead. Ah, we know exactly where this lives. Annoying but manageable. Our favorite tier. Basically the meh tier. Fog over Innsmouth. Okay, so both this one... Uh, nope, just uh, the other one's not there yet. But this one is a little bit strange because it has the text where test spring three, if you succeed, either take one horror or put fog over Innsmouth into play in the, next to the agenda deck. If you fail, do both. We got this wrong the first time through because this was a templating that was we've seen for the first time here, where if you fail a bad, if you if you succeed, a bad thing still happens. Uh, otherwise, each location gets plus one shroud, and the end of the round you discard fog of Rainsmith, max once per round. I think that this card, realistically, is like completely manageable. Uh, the downside, though, is that if you fail the brain test, that horror is actually, like, a little bit unfortunate. Macabre Mento. Test brain three. If you reveal a cultist symbol during this test, you automatically fail. If you fail, take two horror. Um, twins. Uh, test, I'm going to just get these all right now. Test book three. If you reveal a tablet, take two damage. You, automat you automatically fail. If you fail, take two damage. This one's test brain or book four. If you reveal a squid during this test, you automatically fail for each point you fail by. Choose and discard a card from your hand. Okay, so the Macabre Memento. 
Oh god, we gotta we gotta scroll up pretty high, don't we? The Macabre Memento and the Fractured Consciousness, these can each leave in the this is bad. Now the memory of oblivion. I mean, I think if you reveal the squid token, this is a bad time. But by the very nature of the game, hand is a lot easier to replace than damage and horror, right? So I think, I think I'd rather, I mean, it really depends. Honestly, no, let's, let's give them all the respect. They all hit in different ways. I think they're all, they're all bad. They're all bad. I would personally rather draw this one, but sometimes I'd rather draw this one. Sometimes I'd rather draw this one. But if I was just looking at this in the vacuum, I'm okay with losing cards in my hand. Uh, because I can replace them. I mean, at the same time, though, if I was Silas, I'd want to draw this one. If I was Silas, I would never draw this one. But I think, I think this shows that they're all just very reasonably designed around each other. Uh, that I think that they just sit in the same tier. They're all bad. They're all bad. Malfunction. Attached to the nearest vehicle story asset. Action abilities attached to the asset cannot be triggered. Um, test book three. If you succeed, discard malfunction. Uh, annoying, but totally fine. Annoying, but completely manageable. Title alignment, peril. Choose one location where there's at least one investigator. Increase that location's flood level. Each investigator at the chosen location takes one damage. If the, lo the chosen location's flood level is not increased, this gains surge. Huh. <sighs> I think it's slightly above the other one. It's a tier above the other one, just because it deals damage. It also has peril, so you can't talk to your friends. And anytime I draw an encounter card and I can't talk to Travis or Bryn, even just being like, how's the weather? It gets me. Uh, Syzygy, peril, you must decide. Each investigator loses three resources. Each investigator takes two horror. Place one Doom on the current agenda. Uh, so, if we look at the one that I talked about earlier, which was the back in Forgotten Age, it's probably in the not too bad one. Low on supplies. I do think that this one is higher, just because uh, three resources is notably, uh, is notably worse than uh two resources like three resources is an entire card before it comes back um two resources is an action and a turn right i think that the syzygy is just a little bit more uh, a little bit worse than the low on supplies insmith look put it to play in your thread area you get minus one book and minus one sanding you gain the deep one trait Test book, uh, brain three. If you succeed, discard Innsmouth look. Um, all of these are in the annoying but manageable tier. Like we have uh, Dreams of Rilia. We have Snake. So in theory, this one should live there too, right? I think this is the weakest of the three. I think I'm actually going to put this one in not too bad. I think this one is actually a notable tier lower um, than the other ones. I think it is just... I think it's just... Uh, I think it's just there. I don't know why, I just feel it. I feel like an Innsmouth is less scary. It's less scary than the other two. Furtive Locals. Ah, here's the other one. Test book three. If you succeed, either take one damage or put Furtive Locals into play next to the agenda deck. Investigators cannot parlay. Surely it would be higher than Curse of uh, Rilia as it reduces intellect rather than willpower. Um, 
in uh, book matters less than brain because when you're the clue getter, your book is already like you basically. So basically, like when you're the clue getter, if you get that, your Innsmouth look basically says your the text on your magnifying glass is blank, right? Um, but with the brain one, it's now you're like it does brain. And sanity. So your defensive stats, both of them are both lowered for the mythos phase. Your brain and then you also can take less sanity before you die. Uh, for the locals. So this is the damage. Where did I put the other one? Did I put that in? Uh, no, I put the other one in like, it's fine, right? Um, the parlay is bad. The parlay can really throw you for a loop. I think the parlay is bad enough that this thing is going to live in a whole new tier. It's going to live in the annoying tier. Just because the parlay can really shut you down from a turn in the Vanishing of Eleanor Harper, which is incredibly relevant, right? Because you want to be able to parlay and discover the mystery while you can as much as you can in that scenario. So yeah, yeah. Deep One Invasion. Hey, it's the box art. Shuffle the counter deck, discard pile. Uh, shuffle the discard pile into the deck for each location to the. Oh man, this is an in too deep. To the east of your location on the same row, discard cards to the top of the counter deck until a deep one enemy with hunter keyword is discarded and spawn that enemy at that location. Uh, this card is spicy. The flavor on this card is incredible. Um, this card uh, can be bad. This card also can be nothing. This card can spawn one enemy. This card can spawn like four enemies, right? There's a big, uh, there's a high ceiling and a, a low floor on this card, right? So like it can fit into like a big box. So finding where this card sits is a little bit difficulty on the, is a little bit hard on the, on this. So it's going to be a little bit difficult. I think it's annoying, but manageable. I think it's annoying, but manageable. Hey, that's also the art from the thing, isn't it? That's just the, the, to the right. Pull back, test brain three. If you fail, move the connecting location to the east, ignoring all barriers, then please place each key you control in your location. This is awful. This is really bad. This is a uh, this card uh, can destroy your into deep run. Uh, so you better have a freaking plan for it, right? You better have a plan for it. Uh, if this, if the goon and the Kluver are too far apart, this also means like dead Kluver, right? Especially because you ignore barriers. If there's barriers in the way too, and you need to go around. Oh my god, this card just, it's a its a beating. It's an absolute beating. Inundated. Place one barrier between this location and each connecting location with no barriers between them. If no barriers are placed by this effect, inundated gains surge. Uh, I like this card. I don't think it's too scary, to be honest. I think it's mostly just not too bad. It has the potential to be bad, but I think overall, barriers are pretty easy to get rid of. Um, and... It also, this one shows why, why splitting apart, like early on, if you draw this early on, it's going to show why splitting up is bad for in too deep. You should try to stay as close to each other as possible, and this one will show you why. Shapes in the Water. Love the art on this card. Test Brain 2. If you fail, take 2 Horror. It gets plus 1 difficulty if your location is flooded. flooded 2 if it's fully flooded. I don't even think there's anything to say. This just goes up into the bad tier. Aquatic Ambush. Put Aquatic Ambush into play next to the agenda deck. When you reveal a Chaos token while attacking an enemy at a flooded location, reveal an additional Chaos token. At the end of the round, discard one copy of Aquatic Ambush from play. Um, this one hits harder if you have guns. If you're me, um, and you use, like, melee weapons, you're like, okay, I'll just spend, uh, that's fine with me. But I do think that this is more annoying than it is not too bad. I do think that there it's 
The, the math change, especially if you're using like a firearm with ammo or a mystic spell, right, with uh, charges, it notably becomes more annoying to have to deal with. Oh, it's at a flooded location? No, nah, it's not too bad. It's, a, it's at a flooded location. Uh, you, can, you can play around that a bunch. Yeah, if it's a, at a flooded location, that becomes a lot easier. Just get in the fucking boat. Just be like, get in here! Da, 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 right? Like, then it's easy. Then it's easy. All right. Horrors from the Deep. Test foot two. If you fail, take two damage. Uh, this test gets plus one difficulty if your location is flooded. Plus two difficulty instead if it is fully flooded. Hey! We know that. We know that one. Stowaway. If no investigators are in the, uh, the vehicle, stowaway gains surge. Otherwise, each investigator in vehicle must either take one damage and one horror or leave that vehicle. Each investigator who left a vehicle cannot enter that vehicle for the remainder of the round. I think it's annoying. I think this card's annoying. Um, sometimes it does nothing. I don't know. I think it's annoying. I do remember this card being a little bit more um, annoying than how it sounds. Like, reading it, it's not as... Reading it, it doesn't sound too bad. But when you put it into practice in the scenario, this thing can actually kind of be a little bit of a beating. Dragged Under. Put Dragged Under play in your threat area. If you're in the vehicle, leave it. You cannot enter vehicles. Oh, this one's annoying. Test Fist or Foot 3. Uh, if you see, discard Dragged Under. Yeah, this, this MF is annoying right there. It can really throw you for a loop. I think it was when I played my Mark and Amanda run on the Patreon. And I, uh, I got, like, dragged under with Mark. And I was like, okay, I am never going in the vehicle again. <laughs> the vehicle is now yours, Amanda. You go do things. I'm just going to stay here and kill things. I think something like that happened. It's, annoy it's an annoying card, though. Bumpy Ride. If you're not in a vehicle, test fist, uh, foot five. If you fail, take three damage. A, why are you getting out of the vehicle in... Uh... Man. Can we talk about how in horror and high gear, if they just made it so you couldn't get out of the vehicle, it would... Like, I understand, like, there's the idea of, like, running near the end, but they really should have just made it so you couldn't get out of the vehicle at all. That would really have taken the complexity down an entire step. Anyway... If you're in the vehicle, that vehicle's driver tests foot three. If the driver fails, each investigator in your vehicle takes two damage. Yeah, that's spooky. That's bad. That's a bad card. Hey, the next one's the same thing, but for horror. Easy. All right. Eyes in the trees. Test brain four. If you fail, you must either discard an asset you control or discard one card from your hand for each point you failed by. If you fail and you're in a vehicle, each other investigator in your vehicle must also resolve the effects if they just failed. I was reading chat while reading that, so I should do take that again. One more time, please. Test brain four. If you fail, you must either discard an asset you control or discard one card from your hand for each point you failed by. And if you fail and you're in a vehicle, each other investigator in your vehicle must also resolve this effect as if they had just failed. That goes beyond the annoying that this one normally falls in, and this is also bad. That's a rough card. That's a rough card. They're catching up. Resolve the hunter keyword on each enemy in play. If no enemies move as a result of this effect, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a vehicle enemy is discarded and spawn that enemy at the rearmost location. Uh, that's the red-gloved man in the art, by the way. Fun little fact right there. Fun little fact. I can speak. 
Um, um, I think... I think this card's just fine, right? It's not like they attack you. Each enemy is a little bit spooky because there can be multiple, right? But in theory, your goon has had nothing to do for the longest time, right? Because they're playing, um... Because they're playing uh, horror in high gear. So I think this one's just not too bad. Hideous Lullaby. If there are no deep one enemies in play, Hideous Lullaby gains Surge. Otherwise, find a deep one enemy with the highest fight value. Test brain X, where X is that enemy's fight value. If you fail, take two horror. Hey! We know this! This is bad! Test Fist 2. Increase the difficulty of this test by 2 if you're at a flood location. If you fail, take one damage and put Kiss of the Brine into your, plate, your threat area. You cannot gain resources or draw cards. At the end of the enemy phase, discard it. I suppose that's just annoying. But it's also just, like, not too bad. I draw this, I don't really care. Right? It's not too bad at all. The art is hideous. When are we going to do a uh, treachery art tier list? Treachery art tier list when, question mark? Totality. Test brain three. If you fail, put totality into play in your threat area. After you enter flooded location, take one horror. At the end of your turn, discard it. Um, this is like... I'm going to be honest. I, I think this is a didn't even draw a mythos card. Like, I've seen everything else here. I'm going to put it in the completely manageable because it still deals you a horror. And I don't think any of these other ones deal you a horror, right? Um, I think it's just, uh, I think it's just completely manageable. Worth his salt. Attached to Cyrus Marsh, even if he's in the victory display. After he moves via the hunter keyword, if he is unengaged, um, resolve the hunter keyword uh, again. His, he cannot attack this phase. Limit once per round. There are a lot of flooded cards in the latter half of that scenario. Just don't move. Totality is rude to run on my on light of the fog for my group. Um, all I can say is like, just take less horror at the beginning, you'll be fine. Like if 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 they're gonna get locked in there, that sucks. That's a bad draw, right? But most of the time, this card does absolutely nothing, right? Like it's just like it just it. I, I'm happy with the completely manageable. I think that card's very soft. If I saw this card, I'd be like, all right, I don't even have a Mythos card this turn, pretty much. So if there is his Hunter keyword, if he's unengaged, resolve his Hunter keyword again, he cannot attack this phase. When he attacks, this attack deals plus one damage and plus one horror, discard this card. Um, it's, Worth his Salt is pretty spooky. Um, Worth his Salt is definitely a spooky card. Is it bad? I think it's inevitable, right? I think it's inevitable, but I don't think it's bad. I think it's annoying, but manageable, right? The right person can take the damage to soak it. If he gets two of them on, I think there's two in the deck. That gets a little bit spooky, but still, it's all just very manageable. You can probably work your way around it. You have control over it, right? And just kill him again. Let him move to you, not attack, and then just kill the dude, right? Taking captive. Test foot four. If you fail, you are captured and place each of your keys on the holding cells. This card's bad. Whoopsie. I think it's very manageable, but I do think the, the downside of this card can be really disruptive in that scenario. Wrong person gets this. Right person gets this and it's A-OK. -okay. Wrong person gets this. Uh, it, the, the wrong person gets this and it can be um, a rough time for that person. 
Fulfill the oaths. If it is, hey, this is a scaling card. Look at this. If it is act one, test foot three. If it's act two, test foot three, fist two. If it's act three, foot three, fist two, book two. For each of these skill tests you fail, take one damage. So in this scenario, there's a lot of curse tokens in the cup. So this can have an upside of removing curse tokens from the cup. Um, I think that this card though is... So like, let's look at this from like the secret perspective because you're probably gonna take a, whore, take a damage, take a damage past the last one. So it's two damages, two damage, not damages, two damage. Um, where does this fit? I don't think it's bad. It's tough, but I don't think it's bad. Sorry, it's not the, it's not like with these ones. It's not really bad. Odds are you're probably going to take two damage. Um... It's probably, because you're gonna probably take two damage, I'll put it in the bad tier, but I think it fits more in like, this is annoying. However, we have been grading up when it matters, like when, like when it actually could be relevant. And I think this card can be bad, so we should respect that. Secret Gathering. Add one curse token to the Chaos Bag. Test Brain 4. If you fail, place one Doom on each Cultus enemy and take one Horror, two Horror instead, if one or more curse tokens were revealed during this test. Um, so realistically, this is going to probably do the fail and place a doom in one horror. It's not going to probably hit two horrors. Two horror. Not horrors. I mean, I've been talking for three hours and 21 minutes. So it's it's been a long stream. My, my tongue is kind of mush. I feel like this card is more annoying than it is bad. It's like almost bad, but I think it, it doesn't scale that much. You can kill the cultists. I don't even remember a lot of cultists in that scenario, to be completely honest. I think it's just annoying, not really bad. Esoteric Ritual, Test Brain 4. If you fail, either choose and discard two cards from your hand or discard an asset you control. If one or more curse tokens were revealed, though, uh, do both instead. As I said, though, there are a lot of curse tokens in the scenario, so it can be pretty bad. Yeah, but on the same note, you can just, like, not draw a curse token, right? You could just, like, not. Uh, this one also is annoying, I think. Heralds of the Deep, Test Brain 3, find instead of your location is flooded. If reach point you fail by, add a curse token to the Chaos Bag. If you cannot, it gains Surge. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, that's annoying. It's annoying. Let's go back to this one. Is this card bad? If I look at this card, I draw it and I'm like, oh, okay. No, I think I'm, I think I'm, I think I am where I am. I think I am where I am. I think I'm like, this is more annoying than it is outright bad. Stone Barrier. This card is fucking annoying. <laughs> It's not bad, but, like, it's freaking annoying, man. So this one is attached to the nearest location. If attached location is flooded, stone barrier against surge. While, while it's ready, investigators cannot move out of attached location. Test foot one, fist two, or book three. If you succeed, exhaust stone barrier. Yeah, like, there's nothing, like, it's just annoying. It's, like, literally just, like, a wall and it's like you have to climb over it first it's just it's just annoying and it deserves this annoying but manageable tier treacherous depths you must choose one increase the flood level of your location discard assets from your play area with the total resource cost of x where x is your location's shroud value okay um So we had the 
the corrosion. And that one was items. That one was just items. So I do think that this one is going to be a tier above. It's going to be the annoying but manageable tier. Going with the, the previous thought we had, because I'm pretty sure there's another one in here that also cares about that. It's been it's been hours ago though, um, but it's uh, I know we talked about that. Uh, Conspiracy of the Deep Ones. Uh, test Brain 2. This test gets plus one difficulty for each sanctum location with a key on it. If you fail, you must either place one doom on the current agenda or the nearest ancient one enemy in play attacks you. General Cervantes. Nine months at the golden table. Just throw away your empty gun and flashlights. Good point, but why am I playing flashlight on scenario eight of, uh, In Smith Conspiracy? That's what I want to know. What... What this, what am I doing with my deck where I still have a flashlight in on Scenario 8? <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Eight, uh, nine months of the Golden Table. We appreciate your support. So this one starts easy and then gets worse. The thing is, though, like, the last scenario in Innsmouth is incredibly easy. Ah, <sighs> peril as well. Peril as well, so you are on your own. We gotta respect that. We gotta respect that. Uh, I think it's gonna go in the annoying tier. I, I want to put it down here in the not too bad, but I think I think it is uh, the rogue's gonna get it, and then they're gonna. I mean, let's take the damage. There's a lot of choices on that card. Like, there's a lot on that card that really changes. The, uh, like, there's a lot of variables to determine how scary it is. Last card, the last of phobia. If no investigators are flooded locations, the Lassophobia gains Surge. Otherwise, each investigator at a partially flooded location takes one horror, and each investigator fully flooded location takes one direct horror. That cannot be prevented. So, each investigator at a partially flooded location takes one horror. Each investigator at a fully flooded location takes one direct horror. This cannot be prevented. Annoying, but also like kind of just not too bad. I'm going to put it in not too bad just because it's like the final scenario. And like you compare this to, uh, I don't know, these. And you're like, you're like living life. It's like the easiest card in the world. Realistically, it could live in the annoying but manageable tier, right? Because uh, it affects all investigators. But I think it just, it's not too bad for a final scenario card. I think we should just follow the trend though. It lives up here. It lives with its brothers. The other ones that just deal Tesla's damage to people. Sick art. Yeah. They should have had this on the box. They should have had this on the box instead of the one they used on the Into the Maelstrom. Okay. Wow. It's done. It's done. All right. So we have a few didn't even draw a Mythos card. A bunch that are completely manageable. That are these ones here that you can see. Um, the not too bad thing gets a little bit bigger. Gets a little bit bigger. The looks like the majority of our cards live in this. Uh, this is annoying but manageable tier, which is realistically where you want the majority of your treachery cards to live, right? Like it's all your treachery cards. And this is actually what I was talking about too. When I, um, 
when I was like, when I first started doing custom scenarios, if all of your cards hit like this area, it's gonna be a bad time, right? You want your cards to be a balance between them all. And I think this shows the balance that they should be. There's a lot of cards that are in the this is bad territory, right? But there are a lot of cards in the this is annoying but manageable. Of course, this is like my own, these are my own opinions. You might have completely different ones. Um, but I mean, I now feel like an expert after talking about them for three hours and 29 minutes. I want to say I absolutely nailed my prediction though for three hours and 30 minutes. It feels a little cool to actually just nail it, but um, this was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, got some popcorn and watched like this uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe experience of me ranking all the treachery cards. Uh, I will be back very soon for another video here on YouTube. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Um, have a great one. And as always, GG's.